great soldiers tonight. It's always an honor to have him with us, Dr. Lester Summerall from South Bend, Indiana. He is... I hardly know how to introduce you, Brother Summerall. You've done just about everything I think that can be done in the kingdom of God. I'm he's a been, brother. He's, he's my brother, but <laughs> he's been a, a missionary, yeah. uh, pastor, evangelist, uh, internationally known speaker, founder of the Lester Summerall Evangelistic Association, a world missionary organization. Uh, he is the author of more than a hundred books. Dear Lord, I haven't ever written one. <laughs> including Miracles Don't Just Happen and My Story to His Glory. He is also the founder and president of World Harvest Bible College from South Bend, Indiana. Let's just tell Brother Lester Summerall. Welcome tonight. Thanks. How you doing, Brother? Wonderful. Good to have you here. Um, before we got underway tonight, I thought it'd be kind of fun uh, just for you to see mm -hmm. that big old C-130 airplane. Mm -hmm. Can you roll that monitor over here? Yeah, Lord, of course. Um, can I just first of all say, Brother Summerall, mm -hmm. thank you on behalf of mm -hmm. thousands of TBN partners. Mm -hmm. We needed to get some food over to Russia real fast mm -hmm. to cement our relationship with some of the political leaders over there mm -hmm. who are giving us the permit to build Christian TV stations. Mm -hmm. It would have taken months to get that over, Brother Summerall, over uh, the, the, the ocean, can, ocean going vessels, but the big C-130 was in place. I called Brother Summerall and uh, I said, is there any way you can help me? He says, when do you need it there? I told him, he said, it'll be there. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the shortest phone calls. You were on your way to Hawaii, I think, or somewhere. <laughs> and I just happened to catch you, remember, mm -hmm. uh, the other night on the phone? Mm -hmm. And I just want to say thank you from my heart mm -hmm. for uh, being right there with what was needed well, at the time. Uh, we have an opposite story from yours, you know. Uh, the Lord uh, spoke to me and said, did, did I give you a C-130 Hercules? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, where is it now? It, it, it's, it's, it's in the hangar. Uh, are, are, are C-130s made for hangars? <laughs> no, sir. Well, it says, get it out then. It says, I want you to go and feed my people in Russia. I said, I don't have any money. He says, I, I'm going to, to help you with that. And within 24 hours, your phone called and says, how much does it cost? I said, I can take 30,000 pounds of food. That's a dollar a pound, uh, much cheaper than you'll ever get it anywhere in the world. Uh, and, and, and he said, would you take two loads for me? And within the next uh, uh, couple of days, we, we had your money. And that's what started it all. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so we say thank you. God's people responded that night with the $60,000 and more. In fact, we've yeah. got more funds available to uh, send more food. Uh, here's the big C-130 landing, and just stick it under the glass somewhere. Uh, and uh, then my office has made uh, a, a lovely plaque in appreciation to, to both of you, uh, to Paul and Jan Crouch. We almost put Jan and Paul. Oh, no, Paul and Jan. Oh, that Jan. wouldn't be? Well, we put it the other way, Paul and Jan. Doesn't matter. This, this is your actual food being taken oh. off, and there are the Russian soldiers standing oh, right there, my, my. and there's the truck that took it away. Uh, that wasn't fabricated. That was taken right on the spot, and we'd like you to have that oh. as a memorial as to when you fed the hungry people of Russia. Thank you, Brother Samuel. We will treasure this with all our hearts, mm -hmm. and that'll go in the lobby of the International Production Center. Uh, the big old C-130 sitting there, and that, yes, sir, I was there. And when those, yeah. that big old belly opened, yeah. <laughs> and out came the, the skids of food. And, yeah. and Brother Summerall, I, I, I hope you all understand mm. that this load did double duty. Not mm. only did it feed hungry people, which mm. God told us to do, mm. but this cemented Hmm. relationships with political leaders over there who yeah. are giving us permits to build Christian yeah, stations. It, it will. Uh, you, you, you feed a hungry belly and they respond to anything you've got to say. Yes, sir. If you feed it. But a hungry man cannot talk sense. He's too hungry. And, and we're going to see millions of people come to Jesus because once we fill their belly, they're going to say, who sent it? We say, Jesus. And he says, that's who we want. Yes. We're going to see millions of people saved in the end time through feeding people that are hungry. Then we'll fill their hearts. 
Well, we fill their hearts first. Glory be to God. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, is that little snippet up? I, Brother Summerall, I got to be standing out on the runway. Watch, yeah. your, watch your monitor over there. Mm -hmm. Look, look, look. There comes that big old bird. Out Lord, it's an awesome machine. Out of the sky. Burr! Oh. Our hearts are warm, but our noses are cold Almost in above. Moscow today. The good news is Lester Summerall's giant C-130 has just landed. The belly is opening and already I see food, 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 food to help feed our precious Russian brothers and sisters here. <laughs> oh, Lord, I thought you'd enjoy seeing that big yeah, old bird land on the Moscow runway. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm an eyewitness. That food yeah. got there and uh, the yeah. people were ecstatic. Amen, they were, they yeah. are. No trouble getting right. it through customs at all. No, they don't charge us any customs. <laughs> no. Uh, we, we took a, a boat full of food over there uh, uh, last August, and, and they, they charged us nothing. Our boat was in port when Gorbachev was under house arrest, and the curtains went down. You couldn't hear anything out of Russia. We didn't know what our boat was sunk, and, and the people were dead. We had no communication, and when, they, when the cloud lifted, they were the sweetest people in the world. They pulled us up to the dock. They began to unload the food for us. We rented a hundred semi trucks to take it up, uh, up to St. Petersburg for us from from Riga, and 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 uh, and they did everything free of charge. They charged us for nothing. Uh, on one side of us was a gunboat pointing its guns toward us, and we said, uh, "If you don't mind, what's that for?" They said, "Nobody's going to hurt this boat." Oh, says oh. says we're protecting it from anything. Yeah, yeah. And down at the foot of the gangplank, there was eight. Uh, KGB men, and we said, well, what, what do you think you're doing here? He says, nobody's going to board this boat without our permit. He says, you're safe. He says, we have no hooliganism. We'll have nothing. Nobody's going to touch your food but you. Mm. And, and so we had the total full cooperation. And when we fed those people, brother, uh, I've fed people all over the world, but <clears throat> I don't think I've ever fed people. <laughs> oh, Jesus. More thankful than the Russians. Some of you think they're rough, tough people, but you don't know the true people. You just know a few fringes. Mm -hmm. They're the kindest, true. sweetest people. And all the lines that we had, I didn't see one person push mm -hmm. or shove. Uh, it, they are the loveliest people. They really are. And uh, we're, we're, we're still feeding them. I, our C-130 goes in there every day to another city, and we give the food to the pastors, and the pastors give it to the people. And every day there's a greater shortage of food in that country. Yes. It's, a, it's a very sad situation. And God said, I just don't want my children that say, Our Father which art in heaven, to die of hunger. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They've been persecuted enough. Yeah. They've been chased by the secret police. Some of their relatives have been dead. Uh, some of them are in, in, in prisons in Siberia. And, and they've suffered enough. And now it's time for God's people here to love those people there and, and to help them and, and, and to bless them. In a minute, get your pencils out. Some of you will want to get in touch with Brother Summerall and help him and bless him and whatever the Lord tells you to do. But uh, before that happens, and it'll give you a chance to go get a pen or pencil, um, uh, I want to just say a little message to my director of engineering, Ben Miller, right now. Ben, Brother Summerall said he'll take the TV equipment over. Uh, so all we'll have to do is send that TV equipment to, uh, what do you say, Copenhagen, Copenhagen. Denmark. Yeah. And uh, then the I big sea. I wish you had one of your men there. You were talking about having a man uh, in, in, uh, you want it in St. Petersburg, you want it in Moscow. We want it in St. Petersburg. You want it in St. Petersburg. Yeah. It'd be nice if you had one of your men in Copenhagen uh, that could get right on the plane and ride with it. I'll send him. Will I'll, you? I'll send him. It, yes, it, sir. You know, double security is better than losing something. Yes. And, and my plane will be there. Uh, it, we house it about a hundred miles from there in, in the city of Aras. The Danish people have been more kind to us than angels. They, uh, even our, our C-130 broke down last week. They, pr they repaired it free of charge. Really? Yeah, the military did it. We keep, oh, it, we keep it in a military base there. And they, they, they give free housing in the military base to all of our personnel. And they feed them free. Uh, and we have never in the, in the world been treated better than the friends of Denmark. They are truly... Great. I wish you'd just give Denmark a hand, everybody. Yeah. Would you do that? <laughs> well, yeah. 
Maybe I'll just pile on and come with them. I, I just, uh, I've got to get back over there. You know, the station's yeah. under construction. And uh, at any case, we'll have uh, Ben or John Carner, one of our right. people there, to just ride with it. It'll be a short flight from Denmark yeah. over to... Den uh, we, make the, we made it about ten times already. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I want you to know we'll cover all the cost of the gas and the expenses to get it from Copenhagen over to, uh, to uh, St. Petersburg and yeah. back. God's people have already, don't even send me any more money for that. We have enough to do that. And uh, what I'll need now in the, in the near future will be uh, more help as we, as we order the big high-powered transmitter and the other television equipment. Uh, Brother Summerall, I want you to pray about getting uh, your programming translated into the Russian language because uh, we'll put it on for you over there and yeah, you can speak. We have a lot of sermons in English and Russian together. Oh, you do? Yeah. Already? Yeah, already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. then I will have... We, we, could, uh, we can see that you get those. Yeah. I, I want those immediately yeah. because... Yeah. in French, Dr. Summer. Pardon? French. Yeah, we have some in French, oh. yeah. I we mean, preach all over Europe all the time. That, <laughs> and so we got both languages, you know, together. And it so makes I, it very nice because most people over there, especially the upper 10% of the nation, they want to learn English. And when they hear it in their language and the English language, it's, it's really a lesson. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Brother Summerall, the, 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 the top TV man from Zaire mm. was in my office last week mm. begging me mm. for more French Christian language program. Christian programming. Mm. They'll put it on the satellite. It'll cover all of the... French-speaking republics of Africa hmm. off satellite, and so I need French and Russian. Hmm. So if you have some, okay. please, uh, before we leave the studio tonight, I want to get names of your staff people and okay. folks that we can communicate with. All right, I want to go back in time just a little bit. I don't know if I've ever asked you this or not. I know you, you grew up in a, in a Christian home. Your father was a minister, wasn't he? No. No, he was? No. My, my mother was a wonderful Christian. My father was the last person ever converted in my family. Ah. I have three brothers that were preachers, mm -hmm. and I'm the youngest, so it would seem like they're my daddy. Uh, what, what kind of a, yeah. <laughs> what kind of a, of a uh, religious experience did my, you grow up with? My mother had the Holy Ghost before I was born. Every hour that I was in her belly, she spoke in tongues, and I couldn't do anything but kick a little. <laughs> and and when I when when I was born, uh, our, we had six or seven kids, and so we had a big house. And the women's prayer meeting met there, and all they did is sing and shout and talk in tongues, till I hardly knew what language to use on the street. I heard both of them <laughs> about the same as one as the other, and and so I've grown up all my life. You know, we 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 our family belonged to the Seminars of God from the time it started because we were already full mm -hmm. of gospel before it started. Yeah. Can you put your finger on a time when Lester Summerall really gave his heart to Jesus? Yes. Uh, in Panama City, Florida, I was born in New Orleans, and my family moved to Panama City, Florida, and I began to spit up blood, and we don't know why, but tuberculosis began to come upon me. Our family doctor was just three, three doors away, and he set up a little hospital in my bedroom, and, and, and uh, he cared for me every day, at least twice a day, and I got worse and worse and worse until... Oh, well, one, one afternoon, I began to heave up big hunks of my lungs and, and into the little bedpan that the doctor pr had prepared there. And they ran, got the doctor, and the doctor said, you know, Lester will be dead in two hours. Says, I can't get a pulse, and I can't get a drop of blood. Mm. He, he will be dead. And my, all my family was around crying, you know. The doctors usually know about how long you're going to live, and mm. that doctor missed it. Uh, slightly, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> that was 500,000 hours ago, yeah. and, and uh, he's been dead for three or 400,000 hours. Yeah. And, and so it's not what man says, yes, it's yes. what God says. Amen. If God says live, you can live, yes. you know. And uh, lying there, I didn't know what the doctor had said to my parents. They were all crying. Uh, but I saw a vision. I saw a casket right beside my bed, and, and uh, it was open, and God says, that's yours. And I didn't like it, you know. If it's for your mother-in-law, it might be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, right. Pray, praise God from whom all blessings flow. But if it's yours, if it's yours, you don't, don't like, that. You don't like no, no. it. And I, 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 I just turned my head, and, and there was a Bible on the wall, a, a huge, giant Bible with a giant print, and it was open. God said, if you're a preacher, I'll let you live. And I said, I don't want to preach. That, no. <laughs> and so I looked back, and the coffin hadn't gone anywhere. <laughs> and I, I looked at it, and God said, that's yours tonight. And I, I didn't know what to do. I looked back, and the Bible was there, and that was a rock and a hard place yeah, yeah. because I didn't want either one of them. And, and something happened, 
you know, salvation is still a miracle. Yes. It's an inexplicable miracle, really. Something happened inside of me that in my inner being, I decided that if I said something, it would be true. It was the first time in my life I could have mm. vouched for that. And I said, God, if you'll heal me, I will love you, I'll serve you, and I'll preach. Mm. I dropped off to sleep and woke up absolutely converted and well the next morning, completely. I think the Lord yeah. deserves a hand on that. Yeah. Mm. So you were saved and called uh, and same committed night. to the ministry all at the same time? Same night. Uh, three weeks later, I went to a country schoolhouse and began preaching, oh and I've never stopped. What did your doctor say? We didn't see him anymore. Oh, you didn't go back? <laughs> no. <laughs> I see. I, I guess he thought I was buried. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. when, when did the ministry really take the, the great missions turn that, had, that it's taken in uh, your life? I preached from country schoolhouse to country schoolhouse. Uh, up from Florida to Tennessee, and almost two years later, in a country schoolhouse, a young man that I had with me was leading the songs for the people, and I suddenly saw Japanese and Chinese and Mongolians and Manchurians and Indians and Africans and Europeans and walking on a highway. It was so beautiful, all in their native garments. It was just gorgeous, and you don't know a vision is a vision till you come out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you don't know. Well, you, when you're in a vision, you don't know it. You only know it when you come out of it and you yes. find out that that was not you, that was a vision. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at it, and, and the Lord spoke to me and says, you know what that is? And I said, no. He said, that's the highway of life, and every human is on it. He says, they're all on the same highway. There's no highway for Japanese, and another one for Chinese, and another one. He says, they're all on the same road, and they were all going the same way. He says, you want to see where they go? And I made a mistake. I said, yes. Mm. And he took me down the highway and showed me the end of life. And over on the right hand, the, the good people moved off on that side. And the bulk of the human race went over a precipice into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. And when they looked and saw they were lost, they blasphemed, they cursed, they, 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 they scratched their face until blood squirted out. They, they pulled hunks of their scalp off and into their hands. And when they'd hit the lake of fire, there'd be just a little ripple of a wave. And they went below and they never came back. And I saw them come. I saw them go into the lake of fire. I know there's a hell. I saw it, you see. Mm. And, and I saw the terror of people that go there. And as I was looking at it, God spoke to me. And he said, you're to blame for this. Mm. And I said, no, wait a minute. I've never seen any of these people. I don't know any of these people. I'm not to blame for it. Mm. He said, yes, you are. And he quoted to me from Ezekiel 3, 18 and 19, if the unrighteous commits his unrighteous deeds, and if he dies in his unrighteousness and you don't warn him of his unrighteousness, I will require his blood at your hands. Yes. And blood was running between all my fingers. And I said, take it away. Take it away. He says, it's impossible to take it away. I said, well, what do you think I have to do? He says, you will have to go to all of these people. Oh, I was terrified. I said, I don't like those people. And I don't want to go to those people. I just want to go home. God says, you're not going home. You're going to go to those people. Oh, when I came back to, uh, you know, farmers are interesting people. They'd all gone home. Everyone had gone home, and they didn't have any electricity. It was a lantern, and they took the lantern. Of course, I guess they had to have it. And I was in a country schoolhouse by myself, <laughs> and it was dark. And I laid on the floor, and, 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 and so I, I should have belonged to the Church of God because that would have been the night I got sanctified. But mm. the assemblies don't believe in it, so I didn't know a thing about it. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so I laid on the floor. I shook and I trembled. I, blood just I mean, the sweat just popped out all over me till it wet the floor around me. I cried until I had to pry my eyes open. And I heard my inside here saying, God bless the Japanese and don't let them go to hell. I said, shut up, Hotter. I don't know any Japanese. Why do I care where they go? But my spirit said, God, bless the Chinese. Don't let them go to hell. And I began to sob and to cry. I, I went through a Gethsemane uh, until I had to come to a spot where I said, now, Father, not my will. I didn't want to go, but your will be done. And something happened. I fell in love with the human race. I preached in 110 nations of the world, and I love every one of them. I lived in China for a number of years of my life. I have three churches in Hong Kong. And I'm so Chinese until they don't know I'm a, I'm a foreigner mm -hmm. because I just love them so intensely until I feel like I'm more Chinese than they are Chinese. Mm -hmm. I've lived in the Philippines for five or six years, and I feel there that I'm more 
more Filipino than the Filipinos are. Mm. I don't criticize them. Mm. I don't find fault with them. I just, I just love them. And that, that's true all over the world. When I go to Africa, they just hug and kiss me as if I was one of them, you know. And, and I love them too, you see. Uh, I'll be going to Angola. The ship called the Spirit uh, will be arriving. And uh, I have a, on, on the deck, I have an entire hospital that was given to me by the doctors in Indiana. And we shipped it from there to, Indy, to, to, to New Orleans and put it on the boat. There, there are over 34,000 pieces of it. Oh yeah. It would be the nicest hospital in that whole country. Oh and we will call it the Jesus Hospital. <laughs> uh, have you heard of Brother Tudo over in Portugal? No, sir. Brother Tudo in Portugal uh, in five years has 100,000, uh, uh, not baptized people, but tithe, tithe-paying members in his church. Uh, and they speak Portuguese in Angola. Yes. And so I've told him to, uh, that we want to give the revival to him because he already has 100,000 people in Portugal and Lisbon. And so he says, yes, that God had laid it on his heart before. And so he's already been down there for two or three weeks getting it ready. And I told him, I said, I want to have a great crusade down there. I send some of your workers down and get the thing ready for me. And he said, well, all right. And I got a cable back next week and says, uh, well, not doing bad, says we baptized 7,000 yesterday. <laughs> 7,000? 7,000, yeah. Brother Sumner. So we're going to have a... We're going to have a revival down there next month, like in. Is the great final outpouring here? And, and I wouldn't and say here. It's there, yeah. Well, I mean, generally yeah. in the world. It, it's where the people are ready for it. I don't think God can give great revival to sinners and, and to wicked people. I think if America would clean up its act. And, and Jesus said, if you would be my disciples, deny yourself. Yeah. Brother, I have begged for money until I, I get so weak I don't know what to do. You've, you've been liberal to us, but hardly anybody else has been liberal to us. They say, oh, that's your program. I said, don't say that. Mm -hmm. God, God said in the last days, he couldn't let his, his children die of hunger. And I said, just, ju just wait till China falls on its face. He says, I have oh, to be there yeah, with yeah. 10 boatloads of rice. Call all the pastors and say, don't let God's children die of hunger. And, and I said, if you don't have some money, you can't do it. I said, you know the problem with the church? After the catastrophe, there's hey, in the bed, in the bed. I said, I feel like slapping your face. You know, you <laughs> stu all, you're stupid. All you're, the TV evangelism. You're, you're stupid, you know. Garbage, yeah. Yeah, you, you get ready. Uh, I was ready with Russia, you see. Yeah. I was ready with Russia before the door opened for us, you see. Mm -hmm. And then we moved into it. You've got to be ready. We're going to the Sudan next where they're dying by the thousands, you know, yes, know. and we're going to take food in there by the tons and the tons and as soon as we get through in, in Moscow. And, but you got to, you, you say, but Brother Summerall, you, you don't have the money. Paul, I have never done anything in my life where I had the money. <laughs> yeah, your money was the first money that came for Russia. And a few more have given, not many have given. I've written to some of my best friends and said, won't you, won't you pay for a load uh, of food? It's only $30,000. And it's ten thousand dollars of, I mean ten thousand pounds of Danish ham, and, and the flour and everything is absolutely first class, and, and, and it's good good enough for Yeltsin's table, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you know. I know. And I said we're not giving them junk; we're giving them the best there is. And and will you help us? And we hadn't had ten to help us. Well, there's going to be some folks help you tonight. Yeah. Trinity's going to help you some more, and you're going to help me get that TV station over there. I know. We'll take that stuff in for you. Yeah. Uh, ship it off tomorrow. We'll give you the address to put it to. I'll, I'll get it. And, and uh, let it be there a few days before we... It'll, we, it'll we, we we're urging in our spirits. We've already been two weeks there. We've gone to maybe 15 different cities. And, and, and so we're, we're very eager to, you know, to do something okay. other. Let's, let's take a minute, and I kind of caution everybody right now get a firm grip on your Bible or your, or your wife or, or, or something here because I want Brother Summerall to, to take us through that amazing story again that very few see so many. Uh, there's another generation here, Brother Summerall, yeah. since that wonderful miracle happened over in yeah. Manila nearly, what, nearly 40 years ago. Yeah, but they also happened this week, so. It, of course. Yeah, I've been I, in meetings this week. You've seen people delivered from yeah. demon spirits. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you one quick little story real fast so that you'll understand because God has given Brother Summerall a most wonderful gift 
of not only evangelism, but also of seeing people set free from demonic power. And uh, I remember uh, in TBN a few years ago, a, a grievously demon-possessed woman came into the lobby. Jan, you, you'll remember that Her very well. Her father was a Buddhist healer. Yes. So there was satanic ritual all in the line. And, and sometimes that line has to be broken. I know Brother Summerall can tell you yeah. a lot more about that. I came, my little son, he was much younger then, came rushing in, Brother Summerall, and he was wringing his hands. He says, oh, Dad, Mom, come quick. Said there's something terrible going on down in the lobby. The prayer partners are down there praying. There's a woman rolling on the floor with foam coming out of her mouth, and, yeah. and uh, she's, she's got to be demon-possessed. So. Yeah. We came running down as fast as we could. The Praise the Lord program had ended yeah. a little earlier. And the strangest thing happened, Brother Summerall, yeah. as we walked down the stairs, this woman... She had no idea we were coming. ...had no idea who we were or where we were coming from. Mm -hmm. And immediately she reared up with several strong men holding her down, mm -hmm. broke free from them, sat straight up and looked at Jan and me and said, with a guttural male voice, said, mm -hmm. I hate you. That's right. And uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, that was my very first experience mm. up close with somebody that was so, you know, you didn't need the gift of discernment mm. to know that that woman was demon-possessed. Mm. She had a devil, and there was no question about it. Mm. Somehow, you would think in the natural you would be afraid, but I, I promise you, a holy boldness came on me like I had never really experienced before. Mm. Jan and I went down, and I got right in her face, and we began to pray, and demon after demon would scream and come out of the woman, mm -hmm. out, out, out. Mm -hmm. One hit of fame. Mm -hmm. She, her little daughter was standing over there who had been a deaf mute for mm -hmm. several years. Mm -hmm. When we prayed, she would scream, and, the, the, and, and I know you don't recommend this, but mm -hmm. it, it happened to us. Mm -hmm. The demons would identify themselves, and one was a demon of deafness. Mm -hmm. And when that demon came out of her, her little girl's ears were opened yeah. immediately. Yeah. Uh, and, and just then another grievous demon came out. It was hot summer night, and we pulled a big window box fan in there to kind of blow some air through mm. because this took several hours mm. for us to pray. And as one of those demons came screaming out, this big fan just exploded in fire and smoke. Mm. Now, I call it a coincidence if you want to. I, you know, hey, there was some strange stuff going on that night. The woman was helped, but I can tell you that she was not totally delivered when she left our presence that mm. night. But in a few days, guess who was coming to be on Praise the Lord? <laughs> Brother Summerall. This was several years ago out in Southern California. So I got a hold of this lady's pastor mm. And he brought her down. And friends, I want to tell you something. I'll never forget this experience as long as I... Brother Summerall said, all of you get out of the room and leave me alone with this woman. In the, chapel. In, the in the prayer chapel there. We shut the door and I declare you could hear Brother Summerall all over. I mean, they could hear him from the pit of hell <laughs> all the way to the throne of glory. <laughs> Uh, he, he, he commanded that evil spirit to come out, mm. and I am a witness to tell you that that dear woman was and is delivered yeah. totally, completely in Jesus' name. In fact, I saw her pastor several months later, mm. and Brother Summerall, he told me, yeah. That dear woman is not only delivered, she is teaching a Sunday school class, mm -hmm. she is a wonderful woman in the Beautiful. church, and uh, this is years later, she is still delivered yeah. and set free by the power of God. Yeah. Uh, why couldn't I cast that demon out of her? Some only come out by fasting and prayer. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't know, no. <laughs> yeah. no. Maybe, maybe I don't need to know right now, but I... <laughs> I know one thing, if you've got somebody you can't get delivered, get them over to here to Brother Summerall and he can get them delivered. F tell us, just in a nutshell, what happened 37 or 8 years ago there? You were, what, pastoring a great church in Manila in the Philippines, weren't you? The, the uh, great, uh, 
I'd been to the Philippines in 1950, and it was, it, the war was just over, and the country was all to pieces, it was very, and very poor. In 1952, God said, if you'll go back to the Philippines, I'll bless you more than ever before. And so I gave up my church in this country, took my little family, and then we moved across there, and it was so difficult. They'd never had a revival in the history of the Philippines. They'd, they'd, they'd come from animism and to Catholicism and to nothing. You know, they, the, the Baptist church there in town, the First Baptist Church, had been there 40 years and they had 40 people. <laughs> the Assemblies of God didn't have a single church building in a single city in the whole of the nation of the Philippines at that, at that time and had no Tagalog that had ever been saved. So we were running up a, a very difficult situation. And I stayed there for a number of months and couldn't seem to get anybody saved or anything. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you, you, go, you believe I'm going to give you a large church? And I said, yeah. He said, go ahead and build it. I said, but I don't have anybody. Oh, he said, you don't believe, do you? Mm. I said, yeah, I believe. He said, well, start building it. Well, I said, people think I'm crazy. I don't even have five people. <laughs> and, and he said, well, uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll fill anything you'll build. So I went and got a piece of ground, and then I bought a, a B-52 hangar, uh, airplane hangar, and I began to put it up on this lot. I just scared the city to death. <laughs> The, Ameri the American Bible Society man came over wringing his hands and said, did you know this would seat half the Protestants in the whole city? <laughs> Says, you're going to steal everybody's people? <laughs> well, I said, I'm not going to steal them, but I don't chase them off either <laughs> if they want to come, you know. I, and and the, at the radio station there, that Christian radio station, uh, Bon Bowman came and said, my God, Lester, my God, please, you're going to ruin the name of Protestantism and everything else out here with a, with a monstrosity like this. He said, now, you, you can do this in America. He says, I've been to your church there, but you can't do it here. Well, I said, I'm sorry, you're not God, sir, mm. because God said I could do it. Mm. And, and so I went ahead building this building, and right while I was building it, I, one night late I heard on the radio where uh, this girl was being tormented. And it was worse than anybody can even imagine, you know. A doctor laughed at her. And she says, you will die. In 12 hours, he's dead. He didn't get sick. He just uh, gave up the ghost. Now, who, who a medical this, doctor. Who is this woman? Uh, 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 Clarita Villanueva. She, she was a little girl in jail, uh, a, har a little harlot girl. Her, her mother was a spiritist and made her living uh, uh, telling fortunes. And she died when the girl was 12. And her father died when she was 2. And the girls around her says the only way to make money is selling your body at night. So she became a harlot when she was 12, and now she was 17, mm -hmm. and she solicited a policeman in plain clothes, and they put her in jail. And after two days, a monster began to bite her. And, and, and uh, uh, you could see the tooth marks deep into the skin and blood running all, you, all, all around you her. You mean literally an invisible Creature. being or creature was biting her, biting her and leaving, what, teeth marks yeah. and, and blood? Yeah, it's worse than that. A doctor laid his hand on her hand, and it bit her underneath his hand. He, 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 he ran, and she fainted. And he lifted his hand. It had saliva all over, the, all over his palm and deep teeth marks in the girl. Oh, and then she fainted, of course. The head jailer there corrected her. Uh, she said, abused him. She said, you will die. In four days, he was dead. And so there was fear over the whole city. Yeah. Who's going to die next? We, we, got a, we got a witch that's pronouncing death upon this us. This was headlines in the paper, like wasn't it? Oh, yeah, every day. Every day. Every day, every day, every day, every day, day. yeah. yeah. And, and uh, they asked the archbishop of the Catholic Church to come and exercise this thing, and he said, I've got a bad cold. And he never did, <laughs> he never did get over it. He, he never did he show up. He stayed away, I see. And, and so uh, <laughs> on a late radio program, I heard a little about it, and God said, you go set that girl free. And, and I... I closed the door so my wife could sleep, and I went in the front room and laid on the floor all night and cried. And I said, God, I'm so sorry that the devil is destroying a girl in my city where I live. And I, I said, I, 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 I'm so sorry for it. And the next morning, the Lord said, well, go lay hands on her. And I said, oh, I don't want to get my name in a paper from jails. That's not a right place to build a church from. <laughs> and, and the Lord said, you, you, you have to do it. But I did it officially. I went and saw the mayor. And he, he, he said, well, you can go, but says, remember, two are already dead. And, and says, I don't want you to die, the third person. Uh, Lester, didn't, didn't you tell me one time that the Lord spoke to you and said, if you don't go, there, I don't have anyone else yeah. who will hear my voice? Yeah. When he told me to go, I said, I, I just don't want to go. I says, why don't you get somebody else to go? And he said, well, I don't have anybody else. In now, all I, the Philippines? Yeah. I said, well, I said, you're in bad shape. <laughs> yeah, you don't have anybody. 
and, and, and uh, he said, if you don't go and lay hands on her, she'll die and go to hell. Well, I said, in that case, I'll go. Mm. So I, I went under duress. You know, I didn't really, I didn't want to get messed up with a jail situation, you know, and know. try to be a citywide pastor. Uh, but uh, we went, and uh, uh, the mayor gave us permission, and the, and, the, and, the, and the chief doctor in the prison gave us permission. And we just went in there and cast that thing out of her. And, and she was healed, and it takes, it's, it's a long, long story, really, I mean. Uh, Tell us just a little bit of what you encountered as they, they literally put you in the cell with her? Well, I brought her out of her cell. You brought and, her out? And, and the, the, the doctors were there. In fact, the doctor got excited and sent for other people to come see it. When I told him what I was gonna do, he grabbed the telephone and says, if you, he says, you've been reading about this girl, now. we got a man here that's going to set her free. So he evidently believed in me. So other witnesses did yes, come then? Oh, there were a hundred. Oh, the, yeah, yeah. yeah there, were, there were generals there with their parade on. Uh, there were a number of university professors from the University of the Far East, which is across the street from Bilibid Prison, and uh, all kinds of people that he'd invited in there. And I, I almost wouldn't pray for her because of them, because I was the only Protestant present. How did you, how did you begin this? this prayer. Well, what they led me first? from the main entrance clear over to the women's prison, which is about a city block. And we got over there and walked into a room and all these people, they walked in there behind me and I was, and they brought this girl in and she wouldn't, uh, she didn't pay any attention to them. She got to me and she screamed. She says, I hate you. With that deep guttural voice coming out of her. Mm. And I grabbed her and I says, I, I know you hate me. I've come to cast you out. And that was the beginning of the battle. Mm. And, and so, I, I told this creature, I said, now you cannot possess her, you cannot kill her, you're gonna come out of her. And I just laid my hands on her and commanded that thing to come out. And, and it, it's just amazing. All those people fell on the floor that, that were there and began really? to cry and, 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 and to pray with me. Uh, they, though they were Catholics, they had seen a miracle that they, they saw her completely made well. But, but it was it was a battle, wasn't it? Didn't didn't she yeah. curse, curse well, you and, and uh, well she cursed God the Father, blasphemed him, and that spirit did, mm -hmm. and and then I answered back and says that's not true. You're a liar. God the Father's not like that. Then she cursed God the Son, and I answered back and says he's not like that. Then she cursed God the Holy Ghost, and then she cursed me. She says you're a dirty bastard, uh. and, and and says I, I I hate you. You're deceiving the people. And when, when she got through, I said, how could I be? I'm the sixth child in a family, and, 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 and so you're a liar. And, and, and so, uh, and I said, I want to tell you something. You're defeated today, and you're coming out. Now, there are dimensions of demon power, and I think this was a prince mm -hmm. over, because the whole of Southeast Asia had something else happens from that time. Mm -hmm. The Philippines sprung into a revival, well, it was real interesting. The newspapers that day had headlines, the devil is dead. That, that was the headline? Yeah. The devil is dead? Yeah, yeah. I see. Well, they I usually see. exaggerate. Yeah, right. Oh, uh, they always, always I think, is a better word. <laughs> and, and, and so one newspaper said, devil loses round one. They thought there'd be 15 rounds at least, you know. Uh -huh. and, and so I went, the doctor took me to the mayor's office, and, and the doctor said, this woman is absolutely free. She's absolutely normal. And that mayor just put his arms around me and he said, I'm going to always love you. Hmm. I'm going to always be your friend. And he, he was. He'd come to my church and preach. And if we met in a restaurant, he'd jump up and come over and hug me <laughs> before all the people there. And oh, we, became, so. we became very close friends. And also with the president of the country, Mag Sykes, I was. He told Oral in my presence, Oral Roberts, he said, my church was called Christ is the Answer. And he says, in this country, we've come to learn that Christ is the answer is the answer to our problems. Oh, and that'll scare you. You know, oh, yes. but uh, he meant it from the depths of his heart. Now, did they, they, they release the, the woman then? No, I did. I went and got her out. I went before the judge and got her out of jail. And I took her into the home of one of our people. And we mm -hmm. had to train her to be a lady because she, she'd been a harlot since she was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. and, and we trained her to be a lady. And she married a young man that was a rice farmer. Mm -hmm. And they were really very happy. They, I, I knew them until they had two children. And they, oh, were, they were, and I asked him, I said, <laughs> you know, I'm a little abrupt. I said, is this woman crazy you're living with? <laughs> and he said, no, but so she said she was something like that when you found her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but said so she's a good woman. She and helps me. So for a year, you, you kept up with her, I, I know, for as many years. As long as I lived there, I kept up with her, yeah. And she yeah. was totally delivered and oh, yes, free totally and delivered. a wonderful yeah. woman. Yeah. But Lester, that's what 
broke then the great revival, wasn't yeah. it, in, in Philippines? Immediately, I, the mayor said, what can I give you, what can I give you? And I said, well, I do need a couple of things. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we're building a new building here, and, and your, your men here in your office are uh, so greasy in the palms until I don't have enough money to bribe them. And I said, I can't get my, I can't get my, 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 my papers, my blueprints marked out of your office because I don't have the money. Mm -hmm. Boy, he yelled, and in a few minutes, they brought in a roll of blueprints this big. He stamped every one of them, signed them <laughs> in my oh, presence. Boy. And I took them out with me home. <laughs> and he says, now, what else do you want? And, and, and I said, well, you have a beautiful plaza across the street. I'd like to hold a revival over there. He didn't know what it was. He said, how many days you need it? Oh, I said, about six weeks. He said, my God Almighty, is it going to take you six weeks to tell this story? <laughs> I said, well, I can't tell it all in six weeks, but I can tell a little of it. And the Lord gave us 150,000 salvations. Oh, yeah. my. And the that whole six nation changed. Yeah. Ah. The whole nation changed. And never, then, never been the same again. But, but then you finally finished the big hangar, didn't you? And the big church was, was complete? Yeah, yeah we, we, we finished it. Well, we, we've enlarged it. Our church now seats 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we have 17, 18, 19,000 every Sunday. My nephew, David, is the pastor there. That great church goes on today, doesn't oh, yeah. he? And, and hundreds of others. It, they, they sprung up everywhere. Oh, there Lord. had been no revival before, and now there's revival everywhere. Oh, a, Lester. Is... <sighs> You know, I, I, I believe, uh, Paul, that if there's anything American Christians need to know is that they have authority to cast out devils. Yes. Every Christian has authority. But preachers have taught them to be afraid, you mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. And they're afraid. But you have nothing to be afraid of. Teach us. By, Teach the, us. by the blood of Jesus Christ, you're victorious, you know. We have some people that are rebuking the devil and all and trying to win a victory. But well, Jesus won the victory. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, don't, you don't have to fight the devil. You just resist him, and he flees. Uh, Jesus has already defeated him. Uh, you, you don't have to defeat him. He is defeated. Amen. But if you don't know that, he acts like he's not defeated. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we, we, we set people free all the time this week. Last, last Sunday in my church in South Bend, Indiana, a, a, a man and his wife drove all the way from Arkansas to be set free from an occult spirit. Mm -hmm. And that devil had blinded him to where he couldn't read. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't know it. They didn't tell me. I laid hands on him and cast that spirit out of him. And immediately, his wife threw a Bible in front of him. And he read it perfectly. And she began to scream and shout. Says he hasn't been able to read in months. Mm -hmm. The devil wouldn't blind his eyes where he, he couldn't even read. Lester, let me ask you a question. Is it possible that people even viewing the program tonight could be possessed of an evil spirit and, oh. and, and not be aware of it or not know it? No, I think they know it. I, I, I think they, you know, some of these people say, you know, I got a short fuse. No, you don't. You got a devil. <laughs> and, and, and you just gave it the wrong name. <laughs> uh, when, when, when you're controlled by another spirit, mm -hmm. God's spirit is tender and kind. The devil's spirit is mean, you see. So when you're controlled by, by another spirit, that then, then you need deliverance. You need deliverance from it. There are many people sitting in churches today that, that have different spirits of lust, you know, in, in them, and spirits of greed in them, sometimes spirits of murder in them, and, and it, they need deliverance. But if the minister doesn't understand this, then, then he is not able to set them free. How can one know for sure? Now, that woman I encountered I, like yeah. I said, I didn't need any discernment yeah. to know she was demon-possessed. Yeah. But not everyone manifests with rolling on the floor and foaming at the mouth. Uh. How, does, how does one really determine for sure that an evil spirit needs to be uh, cast you, out when of you a person? When you confront a person and they know they're abnormal, every human that's possessed of the devil understands he's abnormal. And so when you want to make them normal, and, and you said, now listen, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you know, and I come to you upon the authority of the Great Commission, when they that have faith shall cast out devils. Mm -hmm. And I come to you with the power of the blood of Calvary, and immediately it manifests. Mm -hmm. It will. Mm -hmm. And there's never been a time it wouldn't manifest. Mm -hmm. He gets frightened. He gets scared. He starts moving all over the inside of their body. You can see it moving with your eyes. You can feel it with your hands. Mm -hmm. And then you, all you need to do is say, well, come out! And it's all finished. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I see. Yeah. So you have to. <laughs> it, 
You have to say it with authority, though, don't you? I mean, if you don't speak with authority, he won't come. He understands authority. Mm -hmm. He is the prince in the power of the air. He has many subordinates. He understands authority. And so if you don't speak with the divine authority, he won't move. Lester, uh, what about people who innocently are dabbling around with things like tarot cards and Ouija boards and yeah. things like that? Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're immediately demon-possessed, does it? No, but it leads to it. Yeah. When, when, when it becomes an obsession. Mm -hmm. and, and then, like, there were two girls that were playing with the, with the Ouija board and and it was telling them who their boyfriend was going to be and how long it was going to be before they got married. And finally, one of them said, who's talking? And the thing answered back in a strong voice, says, Satan. Yeah, yeah. So they were talking to the wrong source. Yeah. When you start seeking power other than natural power, there's only two sources. And one is the devil and one is God. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and if it's a negative thing, it's sure got not God. Don't play with the occult. There are more Americans that are going to hell by playing with the occult than than any other one thing. Our country is being overwhelmed. Everybody wants to know what's going to happen tomorrow, what's this and what's that and what's the other. Hollywood is just eaten up with the occult. And then the New Age movement is a bunch of dirty lies saying it can bring peace and joy. It's eating up the whole country from the White House to the outhouse. And, and <laughs> we, we need to know that if you play with that, you read the next page after their peace and comfort business, they believe in the transmigration of souls. Yes. They, they, they don't believe there's a hell. They don't believe Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. They're complete Hindus is what they are. Mm -hmm. And you've got to stand against it because they hope to control America one day. Yeah, yeah. It oh, could, I, be, I it could be the whole Antichrist system. Brother Summerall, if there are people viewing tonight who realize that they have this demonic problem, yeah. do you believe that they could be set free right now yeah. in their homes as we sure. pray in a little yeah, bit? Yeah, that's right. What, is there anything? That, remember, to come back home. That's, that's right. Did, mm. The Lord spoke to you one yeah. time, didn't he, about Did you come home? on television some the night? Lord, the Lord told me that in, 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 in America, if I would come back home, that in some place, it almost happened on Pat Robertson's show. I, I, I rebuked demon powers on his show, and I don't know how many he got, but I, he sent me a shoebox full of 1,500 in it that said they had been relieved of the power of the devil. Mm. But he told me that come a time when 10,000 people would be set free with one prayer, mm. set free from the devil's power. They'd be wallowing all over their floors at home and all kind of mess out there. Oh, and that if we just kept teaching them, and, and they, they would be free. Then if they'd leave it alone, read the Bible, pray, and go to church, they'd be all right. Mm-hmm. I'm just, there's, I'm not going to put any camera up there so you won't be seen, but just for our eyes here, how many in my little audience tonight really believe that you know someone that needs deliverance from an evil spirit? Let me see your hands up. Ooh. Almost all of them. My father, nearly Ooh. everyone yeah. in our, our high audience tonight. Are full of demon power today. Yes. Yeah. yes. Drugs is a demon, isn't it? It, it can become a spirit dominated situation. Yeah. yeah. Anything that takes control of you is always bad, whether it's nicotine alcohol, drugs, anything that controls your mind is bad. And anything that controls you and makes it compulsive, compulsive desire is wrong. We belong to Jesus and we should always be, be humble before him and obey him. And you can't do that if you're under any kind of compulsive desire. Mm -hmm. If you're not saved, that, uh, with a demon. Now, let me, just, let me just ask you this. A person that might be uh, addicted to cigarettes, nicotine. Yeah. That, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have a demon inhabiting their flesh, does it, or, or does it? Uh, I wouldn't want to say that, 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 it, that it was, but I know when, when I lay hands upon a person and I say, you spirit of nicotine come out, hundreds are set free. Mm -hmm. So it certainly can be a spirit yeah. and, and is in it some cases. Be, yeah. yeah. Any, in it, other words, any compulsive behavior yeah. that's against the yeah. law of God yeah. obviously has some demonic yeah. power behind it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. A yeah. Relationship, yeah. Relationship. And I think there are many uh, stratas of, 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 of satanic forces that yeah. you may be in a lower strata, you see, of it. Amen. He has a kingdom. Jesus said he had a kingdom. Yeah. 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 How many want to see that friend delivered tonight? Mm -hmm. How many think they might even be watching the program tonight? Let me see your hands. Quite a number are, are, are no doubt even watching. 
let's let's agree and and brother Summerall, I don't know do, do you want to take a minute is there a scripture or two you'd like to share uh, and and then just we'll put ourselves in agreement with you and let's believe God to just literally deliver thousands amen. maybe this is the night amen when 10,000 can can be delivered yeah we're yeah. on 238 uh, 286 mm -hmm. television stations now mm -hmm. uh, in many parts of the world um, Here's some of the requests coming in. For example, a little two-and-a-half-year-old child, uncontrollable, breaks everything. Mother you, you is would just... You'd be amazed that there are more children being hurt today by demon power than there are adults. And it's because of the home atmosphere hmm. that's brought to them. Divorces, cursing, blaspheming, drunkenness, adultery, and it gets into the little child. Mm-hmm. Um, Plagued by a large demon. Apparently, this person actually, people actually see these spirits sometimes, they can, don't they? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Demon spirits in our home. Mm. Uh, a lady right here in uh, Dallas said, Please pray mm. for me tonight. Uh, demon spirits can sometimes even manifest with noises and, and uh, things that you hear in the yeah, home. Sure. Can't, uh, can't you? Yes, sure, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Please pray for. Uh, this Gloria, she's out in California, just years of spiritual oppression. Mm. Please have Brother Summerall pray. Uh, spirit of abuse, mm. spirit of adultery, mm. says demons drive him. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't even seem to have a choice. He is no. driven to adultery. No, I could, I could give you a lot of stories on that. Yeah, yeah. Women I, and men. Yeah. Just many of these. There's a spirit of lust that dominates people. Some preachers have had it, destroyed their own ministries through a spirit of, of lust. I had one man to tell me that under certain circumstances, perspiration would drop, drop from all ten of his fingers at the same time, and he would rush like a madman out to, to commit adultery out of his church office. Oh, see, that's, that's and, an uh, evil spirit, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's an evil spirit. Yeah. yeah. You have to give in to it first. Yeah. You, you have to give your mind to it first. It, can't, it, cannot, it cannot come... It cannot come on its own. It has to be invited in. The devil cannot possess people uh, unless he has an open door to come into. So even a Christian is susceptible to this if they will open the door to it. Well, I wish you'd change the word Christian. If you, uh, we don't know what a Christian is. Uh, I don't know whether you're a Christian. You don't know whether I'm a Christian. The Bible says by your fruit mm -hmm. you'll know them. So you watch for the fruit. Uh, and... and uh, uh, only God knows exactly what's on the inside of us. So if we just kind of delete that name and say, a church member, yes. A deacon board, yes. Mm -hmm. Have devils, you know. But uh, it, it, when you say Christian, you mean Christ-like. The, the Bible says that the bitter waters and sweet waters cannot come out of the same, uh, mm -hmm. out of the same place. And so if you've got Jesus in you, the devil cannot come. Mm. Amen. If, if you're full of Jesus, Amen. he can't come. You can command him. How can he command you when you have the ability to command him? How can he command you when you say, go, and he runs, yes. you see? He yes. runs away. So uh, <laughs> you don't, both of you want to run. That'd be kind of silly, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> and if he's going to run, let him run. You don't have to run. Yes. But all over the face of the earth, I have never met satanic forces that I could not conquer. All right. Tell us one more time, Brother Summerall, for believers out there, that are really born again and want to see people set free, when you confront one of these evil spirits, okay, one, two, three, four, five, what do we do? Uh, the, first, the first thing that, well, that, that I do, if I confront a person like that, I said, do you really want to be free? Mm. If you don't, they get right back in the same mess again tomorrow. Yeah. And if they say, yes, I do want to be free. Now, uh, I, I could tell you some stories, you know, in, in, in Hungary, I had three, 300 people at one time demon-possessed that I was cast them out in Budapest. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's a story, but it's, I, 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 I wouldn't be able to, to, to tell it uh, tonight. But uh, if, if, if you first say, uh, do you want to be free? They got to want to get out of the mess. They say, yes, I want to get out. Are you willing to confess Christ as Lord? He is Lord. Yeah, I'm willing to do that. Then I said, no, you're in shape for it. Now, the, now it's my responsibility to, to remove him from you. And I do it. I do it by the command of the Great Commission. Go, Jesus.
Jesus said, go. So I have a command. Yes, and they that have faith should cast out devils. That's all part of the Great Commission. So I begin there. And, and then I said, now I'm ready to do this. And the Spirit then enables me to understand what kind of a situation is on the inside. Mm -hmm. Normally, the devil seeks two thrones. There's a throne in the mind here, the solical throne. And there's a mind, there's a throne of the Spirit. And he's throny. He wants to get on top of a throne. So I put my hand normally in their belly. And if they have a spirit, that thing runs all over the place in there. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. just keeps moving around in there. And I just corner him. And I say, come out! And he's out. So that's, you know. I don't think Amen. you should talk to the devil. I don't think you should mess with him. I don't think, we don't let people anymore scream or yell. We say, shut up, mm -hmm. listen to me. Mm -hmm. We don't let them roll. If somebody starts to move, I say, stand them back up. I said, we're not dealing with your body. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with your spirit. And so you, you've got to know that. Then I quiet them down and bring the thing out. You know? Amen. Amen. They have to come out with one command. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you need some prayer room experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not mm -hmm. public, but prayer room experience. There, in, in, in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, it says, The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There are many Americans today that have left the Bible. They've left what Grandma taught them, and they're giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And if you will turn back to God with simplicity in your heart, and, and, and you will come to the Bible to believe it and go to church to serve God. You will be free, and we'll be glad to set you free. Amen. Let's do it right now. All Those right. of you that want deliverance, you have a little scripture before we? Okay. Yes. Brother Summerall, we are in agreement with you. Are you in agreement with Brother Summerall tonight? Stretch your hands out toward him, that little symbol that we are in agreement. And I ask you now to lead us in prayer, and let's set many free tonight in Jesus' Now, Lord Jesus Christ... Your command, your total command, mm -hmm. your last command was that we set people free from demon power. Yes, amen. Satan does have power, but he only has power he has stolen. It don't belong to him at all. Amen. And so we come against that stolen power that we might set humanity free. Now, Satan, we speak to you by the blood of Jesus, yes. and we command you. Yeah, you, you're already leaving. All over this country, Satan's getting out in a hurry amen. because amen. we're going to hurt him. Come out! Yes, amen, in Jesus' name. Hundreds amen. of you are receiving it right now. You're receiving it. You're receiving it right now. Hallelujah. Start praising God. That's the joy. Start praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start praising God. Yes, we pray. Right now. You'll be free. We praise you, Lord. You must read the Word of God, the Bible. You must pray. Amen. You must go to church. Amen. You can't play religion. You got to live religion. Amen. Or Amen. you cannot stay free. Praise you. Lord. We set you free. Lord, Whoever you are, whatever obstinate spirit is within you, come out now. Yes, we agree. And we set you free. Your job now is to start praising Jesus. And then I think you should call in or write in and tell how you have been set free. Because that's all it takes. That's all Jesus did. Paul turned to the woman that was following him, screaming out at him for three days. He just turned around and said, come out. It was all finished. Amen. You know, Amen. Jesus spoke to the man that was full of devils and said, come out. And they, they, all, they, they all left. Yes. He, they, he, was, he was set free. And you're free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You're free. Amen. 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 Glory oh, to Jesus. There are many Russians that need to be free. Yes. We set many Russians free. Amen. And in Hungary, I want to tell you that story sometime. When we set 300 people free from demon power, there was a congregation of 3,000 present. But we want you to know that Jesus will set you free. Mm -hmm. He loves you, and he'll set you free. Oh, amen. amen. Let's say thank you, Brother Summerall for ministering the Word to us tonight, for blessing us. And I urge you, yes, get to the telephone now at any of our prayer partner centers and let us know what great things the Lord has done for you. I see John Avanzini on the phone back there and yeah. Pat and, and others. Now, we're going to, let's clear the lines for everything except those wanting to phone in with a testimony of deliverance mm. from evil powers. Mm. And I want Brother Summerall to know that 
that uh, the Lord has answered his prayer and that Praise many God. have been set free tonight Amen. in Jesus' name. Let's tell them to help us with our oh, worship. Oh, yes. Word, On the please. screen now, yes. just as we get ready to sing, those of you that want to get in touch with yes. Brother Summerall and help him, Lord, you've Help Trinity, and of course we, we sent need that tremendous help right now to 60. finalize this yes. this thing. We don't we don't have what it takes to take the food in the gas. You know these big four motored monsters. They, it costs us nearly fifteen thousand dollars just to make the trip in and come back out yes. with our crew and all. And it's Amen. and we're doing it. We might say we're doing it by faith, and we just want everybody to have a part in it. In it's Jesus on name. the screen. What? Yeah. Box, box 12. Box 12. South there it Bend, is. Indiana. South Bend, Indiana. May God touch our hearts oh, for it. God's going to give us name. everything we need, Brother Summerall. He's going to help you get more food over there. He's going to help me Amen. build that TV station. Yeah. We're going to get this gospel of the kingdom preached. Amen. In all the world. Jesus before name. Jesus comes. Amen. Because I believe he's coming soon. Don't you? Amen. Yeah, I believe it. Do you believe we're yeah. that generation? Yeah, I do. Amen. I believe this is the Decatur destiny right now. Yes, sir. That we're going to reach a most amazing thing with a, with a new millennium, a new century, and a new decade. We're going to have a new world. Amen. The Jesus world. Amen. <laughs> <I've> <laughs> Hallelujah. <it>. <laughs> Good news. Good news. Thank you, Brother Summerall. And uh, don't leave me now, and I'll get that information, because if you'll help me get that TV equipment now into St. Petersburg, that'll be a Amen. great blessing. And I know my partners will help me. Um, in fact, You've already helped me. We've, we've got enough in the, in the Russia fund right now that uh, we can more than take care of the expenses, but some of you are going to want to get in touch with Brother Summerall and just love him and bless him directly as he feeds millions of hungry people in many, many parts of the world. The song says, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. This place. We feel it, don't we, as we sing this great song. Get to the telephone. the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each Of the Lord is in this place. In the midst of his children, the Lord said he would be. It doesn't take very many, it can be just two or three and I feel that same sweet spirit that I felt all times before surely I can say that I've been with the Lord I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord There's a holy hush around us As God's glory fills this place 
I've touched the hem of his garment. I can almost see his face. And my heart is overflowing with the fullness of his joy. And I know without a doubt that I've been with the Lord. Surely the presence of the Lord I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on his face. Surely the presence of the Lord. beautiful burn you know I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things that's happening in your life one of them was that you were invited to go and minister last night up in a little town called Mineral Wells yes Texas. I was that was probably <laughs> oh we have some people from Mineral Wells that was probably one of the highlights of my <laughs> life last night uh, Pastor Noel asked me to come up and minister which I wanted to do anyway because I go to Set Free in Anaheim, California, and this little church up Mineral Wells was just started not too awfully long ago, and it, I just walked in there and I felt totally at home, just like I do in Anaheim, and the people up there just are so loving, and I was so blessed. I sang three or four songs, and Pastor Noel asked me to to pray for anyone that might need prayer, and uh, I give them a fresh anointing. Now, I had never done that before, but uh, I stepped out. I did it anyway, and what a blessing that was. I'd never been so blessed in my life. It was just total blessing. Anybody around Mineral Wells that looking for a church, <laughs> I advise set free, like I do in <laughs> Orange County, California. Get to set free if you're looking for if you're looking for anything. It's there at set free. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh, boy. That's incredible. But you just came home kind of in awe. Yes, I mean, I we had listened to Rick Godwin say Tuesday night on praise that when the Lord, the Lord wants to work miracles through every single one of us, and all you do is just start stepping out. But you didn't realize that it was going to be the next night that no, you I, would I step didn't. out and begin praying for people and some were slain in the spirit, and it was absolutely a beautiful experience for Vern and for Sonny. She was there with him, and it's beautiful. It's so good to see the Lord taking people from who sang at Knott's Berry Farm so many years mm -hmm. and bringing him into the kingdom and then allowing him to be used in the kingdom in a very special way, and that's beautiful. And we're so thrilled and want to talk about this new album oh boy. that's coming up. Consider the Lilies, and some of the very special songs are on it. But Barry came from California. He's one of our very talented directors that came out. And we're offering this tape for this telethon coming up. And Vern can't be there during the day, so we thought, well, we'll make videos of all of his songs. And then during the day, the telethon crew can have Vern's videos to show. And then we could offer them later, maybe. But one of them just kind of came to light as we were listening to the words to consider the lilies and out at the ranch here in texas Vern was here and barry came and have some of the greatest faces out there of some of the people that are out on the ranch and we use some of them and we're putting together now this is not put together yet i'll have to tell you that but it's just little pieces of what 
happened out on the ranch today and we're putting together videos. I have not seen this and Vern hasn't seen it. And Barry's standing there and says it's wonderful. So we're going to watch it together for the first time. This is the first little clip of the first TBN video ministry with Vern Jackson. Oh my, there's the windmill blowing out at Shiloh Ranch in Colleyville, where I'll be mayor someday, by the way. In fact, we had a little lady come out today. Okay, there is a stranger coming to the ranch on a white horse. And there he comes. And the farmer is very, very discouraged because it's been a hard year for a lot of us. Okay, let's listen just a minute. There's a wonderful story going to be put all the way through it. And it's, you know, consider the lilies is the words of Jesus. When times are hard, Jesus says, consider the lilies. They don't toil or spin. And yet not a king in all the world has more splendor than them. And that's the story that this farmer learns from the stranger came down the road so it's going to be very beautiful and we're very excited about it we're finishing it up tomorrow i was saying a little late a little earlier that little lady i said any of you want to come out and watch us tape the video out on the ranch just come on out so several of them took us up on it yeah. came out today there was a little family out there and the little lady says oh jen when are you running for mayor of colleyville she said i live in south lake but i'm going to move to colleyville so i can vote for you <laughs> I said, all right, I'm going to let you know. This is maybe a joke, but maybe it isn't. Maybe I will run for mayor of Colleyville. I kind of like that town. Do you think we could come up with some wonderful new changes out there? In that well, area? I think we probably could, I but I won't mention anything. It's good. No, we won't <laughs> mention them, but we just might run for mayor of Colleyville. But in the meantime, we're using the ranch to do a lot of videos and we're very excited about it. We're going to go to Israel yes. and tape I Walk Today Where Jesus Walked and the old rugged cross. Can you imagine being at the foot of Calvary and singing the old rugged cross? And I tell you something else that I want the partners to really pray with me about. For many years, the Lord has dealt with me about putting on tape the miracle of God healing me from depression and really telling the story. And the greatest miracle part of the story was that the Lord brought me in a wonderful dream vision. I don't know what it was. It was just there to the Sea of Galilee in Israel. And that's where the Lord brought back my joy that had been taken away. Satan took away my tears, took away my joy, and almost took away my mind and my life. And those of you going through depression, you know what I mean. Nobody feels depression until you've been through it. Well, I've been there. I know how Satan takes you and gives you a vision of your death. He showed me in his horrible, heinous way how to just end it all. We live in California about a mile and a half from the ocean. And over and over again, Satan would show me walking to the ocean and just walking in and never quit walking. Never quit until I drowned. And I know where some of you are that are going through depression, but I know the joy of deliverance. I know the joy of getting your tears back that won't stop. <laughs> And I know the joy of being able to giggle again 
after Satan's taken it away from you. And we're hoping to be able to go before Easter, maybe, tape some more videos and tape this story of how God delivered me and make it available. So many people tell me, Jan, I have so many friends that are going through it. Can you call them and tell them your story? Those of you that have been through depression, you know that every time you tell it, you relive it. And you relive the pain and you relive it. It's very, very hard sometimes to tell it. But I want to go to Israel and tell it and walk along that sea where I saw Jesus. And I regain the joy of my salvation through the one that died for me. And I want to be able to go and tell it. So we want to do I Walk Today Where Jesus Walked. In fact, that, was, that very song was very instrumental in my being healed. The old rugged cross. And what else do we want to do in Israel? Uh, Via Dolorosa. Via Dolorosa, that beautiful song. We can walk actually down the Via Dolorosa and have Vern do a video to that. So we're excited oh, about that. And right now you're going to sing Consider the Lilies. Yes, I am. And the video will be available maybe during telethon. Sing. <laughs> Consider the lilies, they don't toil nor spin, but there's not a king with more splendor than them. Consider the sparrow, he don't plant no sow. He's fed by the master who watches him grow. We have a heavenly father above with eyes for mercy and a heart. Full of love, and he really cares when your head is down low. Consider the lilies, and then you will know. May I introduce you? This friend of mine Who hangs out the star's tail That old sun went to shine And kisses the flowers Each morning with dew But he's not too busy to care about you We have a heavenly Father above With eyes for mercy And a heart full of love And he
right. Thank you, Vern. That was beautiful. I love that song. And Brother Summerall, the victory reports are already coming in. Right. Victory over evil spirits yeah. tonight <laughs> in Jesus' name. Uh, here's another one. Uh, mother called in. Prayer for son involved in that demonic game called Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah. Boy, parents, if you've got, your kids got a hold of that, burn it tonight. Mm -hmm. It is uh, the devil. Mm -hmm. And uh, they talked with him, talked with him tonight after your ministry. Mm -hmm. He's getting rid of Dungeons and Dragons Glory. tonight Thank in God. Jesus' name. Depression is a spirit, isn't it? Yeah. Depression is a spirit. Yeah. I'll tell you how I know for sure. Yeah. Is What's your loss, honey? Well, your I lost mic? my little clip oh, on my microphone here, my so goodness. somebody find me one. He needs a little <laughs> mic I'm going to have clip. to sit here and hold oh, it in my dear. hand all night. There it is. Where is it? You want me to give you mine? I found it. Oh, there it is. Thank you. One night in the middle of the night when some rather bad news had come about TBN that I knew was a lie, but you, you know, you know that it takes a while for the people to realize mm. things are lies. The spirit, I, I was beginning to get those fiery darts of the enemy mm. right here where, and then mm. the adrenaline, adrenaline. And all of a sudden, I was just laying there, and I was just thinking, oh, God, I can't go through that again. Mm. I just can't. And I begin to cry, cry, mm. cry. And all of a sudden, Brother Sumrall, I heard the most gorgeous voice just mm. filled my room mm. and it said I have not given you the spirit of fear, fear no. but of love and power and Glory. a sound oh, mind amen. and you know I knew from that minute that it's a spirit yeah. amen. and I begin to bind the spirit mm. and it left, it left. Yeah. and that is the key yeah. It is the key. Amen. Right. Amen. That's right. Well, some of you are doing the, the that churches tonight. are loaded with people uh, who who are who are simply bound. Uh, they're depressed. They go to bed sad. They wake up sad. They go to bed sad. They wake up sad, and uh, they take diets for it, and, and take exercises for it, and so forth. And they don't realize that you can command it to go, and it will go. Mm. Uh, they're even full gospel people that sit around. You know, you, 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 you watch too much news, mm. and it's not news, it's just yeah. garbage. <laughs> and and yeah. it's, most of it's not true, and, you, true. and you get depressed by it, you know? Yes. America's sinking, America's sinking. And then a few days later, it goes up, and they say, well, it's going up a little, but it's going to sink. Yeah. You know, yeah. None right. of those reporters <laughs> ought to be put in jail or killed or something. Amen, uh, amen. You know, they, they are destroyers of a nation, it's what they are. Yes. Yes. And, and, and uh, they can depress you if you look at it. You can look at the wrong movies and get depressed. Uh, and uh, you you got to keep your mind clean. If you don't keep your mind clean, and if the devil brings anything to, to your ears for you to listen to, uh, rebuke him and say, I will not. I, my mind is clean by the blood of Jesus. You cannot entertain, you cannot entertain sin and have a clean mind. Amen. you gotta, you got to make it go in Jesus' name. Well, the good news is a lot of folks are getting set free tonight. God set them free. Yes. Jesus. Please let us know. It'll be a great blessing Amen. to us to know. And I know it'll be an encouragement to Brother Summerall. Mm. Also, if you need a Bible, ask for it, and we'll mm. send it to you free of charge. Mm. Glad to do it. Let's say hello to Rod Parsley, who's yeah. here with us tonight. Yes, yes Rod. Right. Hello, Dr. Hallelujah. Praise hey, Pastor. Hello. Hello. Hold it, I haven't finished introducing him. Here. He is the pastor of World Harvest Church in Columbus, Ohio. That's a good name. Yes. <laughs> Began in 1977 with mm -hmm. 17... Yeah. How old were you when you got started in 1977? Oh, I, can't, I can't do that much math. I'm, uh, you had I'm to 35 be a, now, so... You had to be a teenager, I would think. Yeah. Uh, the church now seats over 5,200. And those of you that see his telecast every week and now daily on the Trinity Broadcasting Network, you know that it is jammed to overflowing and those folks know how to have church. Yeah. The World Harvest Church, that sounds a little like your kind of church, Brother Summerall, World Harvest. Well, we gave him the name. You loaned it We're to him, partners. didn't you? No, We're we not. gave it to you him. You gave no, it. I, I asked for that permission. Yeah, he did. I, I, had All right. I asked for it. I said, what's mine is yours. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. 
Well, the church has many different ministry outreaches, including nursing homes, campaigns against abortion and mm. pornography. Mm. You'll find any church that's growing and, and really doing a job, mm. there's something going on all the time. Amen. I mean, there's outreaches. Yeah. Pastor Phil Aguilar got His up last... Bible school is growing tremendously. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, it took Pastor Phil Aguilar a half an hour the other day just to run down and tell where all the assignments were yes. for Sunday afternoon, <laughs> the old folks' home, the jailhouse, the yeah. county jail, the prison, yeah. the, 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 the streets, the parks. They went out into the highways and mm. byways. Mm. And that's the secret. Pastor Parsley has authored also some books including Someday Syndrome. Mm. Uh, I, I see an underground church. I see. That's a little typo. I see an underground church. Mm. And his television program entitled Breakthrough can be seen here on TBNs at, okay, several different times. Um, I'm, I'm giving you West Coast California times, okay? So translate this, please, into your time zone. Mm. 4 a.m., that's early in the morning mm. on Sunday. That's mm. 4, that's 7 o'clock on the East Coast. Mm. Then again at 11 a.m., mm. Sunday mornings, mm. California time, remember. Mm. Then Monday through Fridays, 6 to 6.30. It is right. just a half an hour, isn't it, on weekdays? Mm. 6 a.m., California, West Coast time. That'd be 8 o'clock here in Texas, 9 o'clock in Miami and New York. So, one more time, from Columbus, Ohio, let's tell Rod Parsley, welcome <laughs> to Praise the Lord tonight. Well, I'm glad to get two welcomes. <laughs> well, see, when, when you haven't been on many, many times, I try to give you a thorough introduction. You. When you get to be an old-timer here, I just say, hello, here's Lester Summerall yes, now, and uh, yes. we all know him and love him. Yes. It just struck me, we have basically two generations here, but the same glory, the same yes. fire, the same power, the same anointing, Amen. it doesn't run out, does it? Knitted, knitted together for sharing. Yeah, yes. yeah. Just like Smith Wigglesworth and I was. You knew him, didn't you? We lived around him for two years. Boy, you know, some night I wish you'd come back, Lester, and I'd like to just talk all night about Smith Wigglesworth. <laughs> I, I could do that, you, all right. You could, I know. I could, they'd be wailing with laughter when I told them all yeah. the stories. Yeah. You know, my mother, uh, excuse me, Rod. That's I, all right. I, so, <laughs> somebody took me. This to, is my father. You, just, you listen, just keep talking. There's a reason here because somebody took me to task the other night. When I told them, mm. my mother told me that mm. my father was present at a funeral where Smith Wigglesworth literally raised a man from the dead. Mm. Now, had, had you heard that? Yeah, yeah. I think there are four or five people that he raised from the dead. Yeah. Including his wife. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was a plumber at that time. Uh, he didn't really start preaching until after his wife died. Mm -hmm. She was the prominent one in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, in their chapel, he would hand out songbooks and she would do the preaching. Yeah. But uh, he came home one day and she was dead, been dead for three hours, laid out on the bed, and he, he yelled, she ain't dead. And they said, well, she's <laughs> been cold for three hours here. <laughs> and he, he, he wrapped a sheet around her body and stood her against the wall and screamed her name and said, you come to me and obey me. She came. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Glory. Yeah. Now, see, somebody phoned in. I hope that guy's watching tonight. He called in, called me a liar the other night because oh. I said my father had mm. been present where Smith Wigglesworth raised a, a man from the dead yeah. and through yeah. the power of Jesus' yeah. name, of course. Yeah. But now you call Lester Summerall a liar. No, no, don't do the, that. If you got the courage <laughs> to do it. Yeah, if you got the yeah, courage. You got the courage. We make a good team, Paul. Yes. Dr. Summerall often says of himself and Smith Wigglesworth that they made a good team. You know, when you're 79 and you're 35, you make a good team because one has it and one wants it, and that makes a good team. We're just pursuing Paul and, Paul and Timothy here. Yeah. <laughs> Rod, uh, let, let's go back a little bit because I, I really haven't uh, had the, the joy of getting to know you as well as I, as I want to. I know you've, you've been on, I think, with maybe, uh, what, Dwight Thompson? I think I've been on eight or nine or times. Yeah. Uh -huh. But uh, I haven't had the joy of really getting to know you that well. Uh, let's start kind of like we did with, with Lester here. Did you grow up in a Christian home? Did, did you know Paul, Jesus I, at an early I age? was raised in the Free Will Baptist Church. And uh, when my mama brought me home from the hospital, we stopped by the church on the way from the <laughs> hospital to home. Okay. I don't ever remember in my entire life missing Sunday morning, Sunday night, or midweek service. Mm. At my house, it was never a question of, are we going to church? Mm -hmm. It was always a question of, which one are we going to? Mm -hmm. And uh, in that church, I gained a great passion 
to see unsaved people come into the kingdom of God. Yeah. And I think if there's anything to be gained from the discarded values of the past mm -hmm. for the church, mm -hmm. it is to regain a passion for souls. Mm -hmm. And I want to say tonight, sitting between two of the greatest soul winners on this planet, that it is time we get back mm -hmm. to a passion Amen. for lost souls Amen. in America Amen. and around the world. Amen. And God will send a revival mm -hmm. when our heart gets back where it should be. Mm -hmm. So I was raised in a Christian home and uh, don't ever remember missing any services. And uh, at eight years of age, I tugged on my mama's dress tail in a Pentecostal revival meeting as a Baptist boy where a woman was preaching, which we didn't believe in. Oh. And I tugged on my mama's dress tail. You, you'd I, kind of snuck into this Pentecostal well, meeting. you know, back then, Paul, and Dr. Summerall and I were talking about it on the way here tonight, it seemed that people had a desire to come together more than they do now. It seemed like we were kinder to one another then than we are now. And when one place had a move of God, we laid aside the trivialities of theological debate mm -hmm. and we just came together again to see souls born into the kingdom of God. Do and you remember who this lady evangelist was? I sure was? do. She's still in our city in Columbus, Ohio and pastoring a church there. All right. And I tugged on my mama's dress tail and I said, I've got to go. We were sitting on wooden benches in a little building that wouldn't be as big as this platform. We, had, we didn't have beautiful chandeliers like this. We just had a cord hanging down with a 45-watt light bulb screwed <laughs> into the bottom of it. Yes, yes. But we had something there mm. called the glory. Mm. And I, that lady preached about hell, and I'm just one that mm. thinks we ought to start doing that again. And if you watch Breakthrough, you know that we're not afraid to talk about hell. We're not afraid to tell you there's heaven to gain and hell to shun. And there's no reason for you to go to hell when Jesus made heaven possible. Mm. But nobody will know that unless we start preaching it. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? I sure do, Rod. Mm. When, when, did, when did young Rod Parsley know that he was really called to preach? Well, at 17, at 17 mm. uh, I felt the call of God on my life. And uh, God gave me that through a vision. I've had two open visions in my life. And it. God gave me an open vision that has a lot to do with... Dr. Summerall, I was laying in my bed getting ready to play a basketball game. Mm -hmm. I was the captain of the high school basketball team in Pickerington, Ohio, and I was getting ready for that game and laying on my bed and the wall of my bedroom disappeared. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I found myself in a scene. I was literally there myself. Mm -hmm. And I was in a place where the, there were just, it seemed like waves of black people as far as you could see. Mm -hmm. There was a man in the distance preaching on a platform mm -hmm. and he was praying for people, but many people couldn't get to him. Now, you understand I'm a Baptist person. Mm -hmm. I don't understand this thing about laying on of hands, and we don't, uh, we don't have healing services per se. And all of a sudden, there was a woman over beside me in that great scene, and she had elephantitis. I looked it up in the encyclopedia after the vision. Her leg was swollen, and it looked like it would burst. Mm -hmm. And she was weeping because she couldn't get to the platform. She couldn't get to that man that was praying. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, if you'll let me pray for her, but don't let anybody know it was me that prayed. Mm -hmm. And I, God said, I'll do it. And I prayed for her, and instantly God healed her leg. Mm -hmm. And God called me into the healing ministry at 17 years of age. Right. But I've always had to be pushed forward. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've never been, you know, David said in Psalm 19, deliver me from the great mm -hmm. iniquity. Now you think, well, maybe that was his adultery, mm. or maybe that's that he was a cold-blooded, premeditated murderer, had Uriah the Hittite mm. slain mm. to cover up his own sin. Mm. But when you examine Psalm 19, you find out that the great iniquity was not his adultery, mm. and it was not his premeditated, cold-blooded murder. Mm. It was the sin of presumption. And the church today is full of presumption. We presume God is one thing without searching the scriptures and finding out if that's what God really is. Mm -hmm. And so I never presumed anything of God. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to be thrust forward. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to be in the ministry. Mm -hmm. I certainly never wanted to be on television. Mm -hmm. I certainly never wanted to be on radio. Mm -hmm. I certainly never wanted to pastor over 5,000 people. And at this moment, if I could get away from it, I would. Mm -hmm. But I can't get away from it. There's something burning on the inside that won't let me go, mm, yeah. and America is responding to the old-fashioned Holy Ghost message mm. of blood-bought, sin-eradicating, mm. God-exalting, mm. tongue-talking, devil-stomping, mm. salvation Woo. by the blood of the Lord. Right, Hallelujah. It's happening all over America. You know, Rod, I think all of us 
reach points. I was reading in uh, Jeremiah, I think, about the 20th chapter where, you know, he was lamenting. Poor old Jeremiah. Don't you feel sorry for him? Lord, I've been reading in Jeremiah. He is... They threw him down in the dungeon. They hurt him. They beat him up. They, 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 they you know, abused him. They yeah. used him. Yeah, they, the religious people. Yeah, the, the religious people. Yeah. And yeah. finally, I never saw it before. He, he resigned. He said, Lord, I will not speak anymore in your name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he did. Yeah. But then the next verse, he says, but then <laughs> there was a fire oh, hallelujah. in my bones. Oh, and, I, and I couldn't help but yeah. speak. I couldn't hallelujah. help but we, We've all been through yes, there. Yes, we have. Where you'd like to just retire and move to the, you know, let, what's that old song, let the rest of the world go by and, and, and just get out of the, the rat race. But dear Lord, that fire yes. won't let us. Will Paul, it? the Bible says, Jesus said, in fact, in this world, you will have tribulation, tribulation. and persecution. And no yeah. matter how hard mm -hmm. the church tries to run from that with a gospel of humanism that's been perpetrated upon us, where we brought God down to our level by exalting ourselves up to his level, mm -hmm. and we are not him. Isaiah 40 said, he, he is far above us. Uh, he said, I am the Holy One. To whom shall you liken me? I sit upon the circumference of the earth. I weigh the dust of the earth in the palm of my hand. I spread out the heavens like a canvas tent to dwell under. I am the Holy One of Israel, and besides me there is no God. Amen. But we need to turn our focus to Jesus. Amen. We need to realize that we are going to have persecution. Amen. And Paul, I wanted, you know, when, when you made the daily time slot available to break through, Mm -hmm. I want to say it and let everybody know all hell broke loose mm -hmm. against Rod Parsley, well, against World Harvest Church. The club. And I want the people at home to know mm -hmm. that it's not just us. Everybody is going to come under that kind of vicious attack. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this, there are two kingdoms. Make the decision which one you're going to be in and get in it with all your heart. Mm -hmm. And don't dabble out of God's kingdom into the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. Don't believe the report of the secular news media. Mm. Believe the report of the Holy Ghost news media. Amen. Believe what God says about you and what God says about those around you. They start, they flew helicopters over our house, Paul. Mm. I, I, my wife is in the bedroom and they're flying news helicopters around our house and shooting cameras into our bedroom. Oh, really? they're, they're, they would say anything and everything to try to stop this word from being preached. Mm. But we're not going to stop. Mm. We're going to preach about the blood. Mm. We're going to preach about the mighty baptism in the Holy Ghost with Glory evidence of speaking God. in other Amen. tongues. Mm. And we're not going to back up. Yeah. We're yeah. not going to back up. We're going to have tribulation. We're going to have persecution. But be of good cheer, Jesus said, for he has overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. You are going through it right now. Maybe the hardest tribulation and trial of your life. But allow God to turn your tribulation into triumph and your trial into a testimony. And realize when you're going through, that's the fact. You're just going through. You're going to come out the other side. Just don't cast away your fearless confidence. Hold on to the hand that's greater than yours. Reach one hand into the glory and the other into the gutter, and you will triumph in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth if you just don't quit. Woo. Man, can we turn him loose and let him God, preach I'm a little sorry. bit here? I'm Dear sorry. Lord, that's good. That's good. Okay, I got a question for both of you. I traveled to Russia, mm. and they welcome me into the schools, and I can pass out Bibles, yeah. and we can preach, and we That's can right. go anywhere. That's right. I come back to my own country of America, mm. and I can't even say the name Jesus That's right. in many schools. Mm. That's that right. is changing, thank the Lord. Mm. I see in, in, in South Africa, revival is breaking out. Mm. I hear, I haven't been there yet, but I hear Australia is, is bursting with, with revival. That you, you've just been there just by the got summer. Back, and that's a tremendous revival. Where I would be there two years ago with 200. They have 1,000 now all over the country. There's a move of God all through the, uh, Australia. I'm seeing it all over Africa. I'm yeah. seeing it now beginning even in Europe, some of the hardest places. Central yeah. America. Central America. South America is, is alive. Yes. I, mean, I mean, they're outstripping the birth rate yes. with the salvation rate. Down what about America? Now, I hear, you know, we have notable exceptions, great churches like yours in Columbus, mm -hmm. great churches like Tommy Barnett in Phoenix, great churches like Carl Strader down in Florida, you know, and of course World. Sure. There are notable exceptions, but generally speaking, America, mm -hmm. what's, what's wrong? Where are we? It begins America? in the home with a spirit of lust mm -hmm. 
uh, uh, men and women both are, are lusting after too many things, uh, carnal things, natural things, and even sexual things. Mm. Uh, and, and then it begins there with lust, and then it gets into the children, and the children take it to school with them and torment the teachers with it. And, and then it, it, it's on an abundance of an increase getting to all facets of our society. And humanism is taught in the public schools that, yes. uh, that we are our own gods, that we don't need an outside That's God. Right. And this, is, this has penetrated the very heart of our country uh, until there's hardly a politician today that sympathizes with us. You, you start to build a church in most cities, you have to fight the devil. Yeah, right. I mean, and I'm, the zoning board. Um, and the zoning board. And, mm -hmm. and you just have to fight them and, and, uh, because they don't, want to, they don't want a church. Many communities will rather have a tavern than a church. Much rather. So, so you've got a, a nation today that has actually turned its back upon, uh, upon its own history, you know. Uh, that our forefathers prayed and our forefathers loved God and our forefathers went to church. But we, we have a nation today that's without God, you see. Amen. All right. And let me let me interject. From, from, from a younger perspective. Well, let me interject one thing, and it's something Dr. Summerall and I were talking about on the plane on the way here. John Wesley, the great, the great founder of the Methodist denomination, had this to say. He said, if Methodism, I do not fear that Methodism will ever be overthrown or that the people called Methodists will ever cease to exist. But I do fear that in existing, they become a dead sect, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He said that if Methodism is ever overthrown, it will be at the hands of our scholars and theologians mm -hmm. who neither practice her principles nor her doctrines. Mm. It is from these men that we must cleanse ourselves or fall by our own weight. Mm. I think what we're seeing in America is we're seeing turned out of our schools of, quote, higher theological education, a gospel of humanism that denies the virgin birth, mm. that denies the blood. We had revival in America when we preached Bible basics. Amen. It's one of the hardest things in the world to find a message. You can go through ministry tape catalogs. Logs. You can search through libraries. You can't find messages on the subject of sin. Mm. You can find them on Christian aerobics or Christian <laughs> self-help programs, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can't find anybody that'll teach you what the baptism in the Holy Ghost yeah, is. And what hell is. And what hell is. Yeah. Mm. Well, there yeah. you go again. Yeah. The, the, the founder of, of the Salvation Army, William Booth said, mm. the problem with the 20th century church will be this. We have decisions without conversions. We have the gospel of heaven without the balance of the gospel of hell. Mm. We, have, we have the gospel of, of the blessing of God without the blessing of the judgment of God. Mm. And that's what we're seeing. And I'm not, this is not a, some, a preacher told me not long ago, he said, I heard you preaching on television, you were preaching on hell. Mm. I said, is that right? I said, I, I do have a habit of doing that. Mm. He said, well, you know, that's the most negative message in the Bible. I said, well, I don't think so. Because every time I preach it, thousands of people all over America yeah. come out of a road going toward hell and get on the yeah. road to heaven. Hey, hey, That's hey. a positive message, not a, not a negative message. Right on. Right Jesus on. said, only the sick need a physician. Mm. Mm -hmm. Only sinners need a Savior. Yeah. Amen. Mm. And we need to get back to those basic biblical truths. Okay. You've given us the problem. Are we going to see America turn around? No. You're going to see people turn around. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're going to see Benny Hinn with a church that you, you, you don't know what to do with it. It's so full of people. Yeah. And you're going to see Rod Parsons' church and Billy Joe Doherty's church. And they're going to be packed full of people. Mm -hmm. But in those churches where they're so full of denominationalism, and so full of just doctrine that's dead, they won't have a thing. And, it, and they're going to fight the people and, and quarrel with the people that have this revival. Do you believe massive judgment is coming to the United States like some would preach, Brother Yes, Zimmer? I think so. I mean, we've all heard the, 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 the little expression, if God doesn't judge America, he'll have to apologize to Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. Do, do you really believe that? Yeah, I feel that's true. It wouldn't be honest with God if he didn't judge a land that was deliberately so full of sin as this country today. But you see, it could be argued that 
national Russia has for 70 years sh yeah, shaked see, their fist and yeah, said there is no well, God. Not, 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 not the people. Not the people. That was just yeah. a few people full of the devil. Yeah. And God finally knocked them down and knocked them out and stomped them down. And now the people are free for the first time yes. in the history of Russia. Mm -hmm. The czars were just as mean as these people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and yeah. did, they were just, they persecuted the common people in religion just as much as the communists did. And now the people are free. You can go into the red squares, you know, and stand up and preach. And if anybody heckles you, the police will go and say, shut up, let him talk. Yeah. You've got perfect freedom in I, Russia I to preach the gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ. And you don't have it in this country today. We ought to wake up while waking up is possible, you know. I believe, I believe anybody can seek God, you know, and, and anybody can be saved. That's our country or, or England. England goes, you know, kind of the same way. And what we need today is a as a great repentance Amen. from our sins Amen. And, and, and seek God. If we will do that, God will certainly hear our cries. Okay, that's, theoretically that's possible. I, and I don't know if anybody has a word from the Lord, but you know, Jan and I were just talking the other day. We, we travel the world, we see the mighty move of God in other parts of the world, mm. and our hearts yearn for our own country. But, yeah, yes. but, but we see just the opposite almost here. It's, open hostility. Oh, yes. I mean, just a few days ago, horrible lies in the newspaper again about TBN and, and, and the work that Jan and I are doing. Lawsuits being filed and things that we had no control over, no involvement in whatsoever, mm. but the newspaper will pr paint you as yeah. the guilty culprit and, yeah. and it's just lies out yeah. of the... Th there is such a hostility the toward problem. especially those of us in, yeah. in Christian but television. I, the problem that I, I see, Paul, is not, is not that the world... I think the church can stand the onslaught of the demonic world attacking it. I, I think the gospel ship has withheld the deadening blows of the God-haters forever. Our problem today is because America sits in front of the wrong kind of television for eight hours a day, and when Dan Rather or one of the other uh, uh, news broadcasters comes on, they believe every word they say as gospel truth. Mm. Then the church turns upon itself. Yeah. We can, we can stand, listen, listen, Paul Crouch and the Trinity Broadcasting Network mm -hmm. and Dr. Lester Sumrall and the End Time Joseph Feed the Hungry Program mm -hmm. and Rod Parsley and World Harvest Church and Breakthrough. Mm -hmm. We can tolerate what the world does, but it's when we turn upon ourselves yeah. that we devour ourselves. Mm -hmm. It is time to circle the wagons around one another mm -hmm. and point our finger in the face of the world and say what goes on inside this family is just that. Mm -hmm. It is family business and stop believing the lie of the secular world against Amen. the church. Amen. We Amen. must do yeah. it. Good, good word. And I want to, I want to say that, that revival, if we're looking for revival, revival is not when the porn shops get shut down. We've seen 10 shut down in Columbus this year alone. We were sued for $11,600,000 by one of them, by one of them. Really? in a class action against every member whose name appears on our church roll mm -hmm. for 11 million six hundred thousand Your whole congregation was every, sued? Every right. person on the roll. They sued every one of them. Every one of us. Oh. Our people stood to lose their cars, their homes, mm -hmm. their livelihoods mm -hmm. because they took a stand against pornography. Mm -hmm. and, and we won that lawsuit, thank God. Glory. But, but it's not... Yeah. Well, and the judge threw it out? Did, did they they threw, threw it out? Yeah, oh, well, we went to trial we won the lawsuit. Uh, the thing was thrown out. They, they were trying to get, we, they proved that we were costing each establishment of theirs in town, which they had about 10, we were costing every one of them over $10,000 a night by being in front of them, not even talking to anyone, Congratulations. just praying. Congratulations. But revival, I'm so hungry for revival. Yeah. But revival's not when the porn shops get shut down. No, sir. Revival's not when the abortionists get run out of town. Revival's not when the taverns close down. Revival's not when the sinners run to the altar. Revival's when the church runs to the altar. Mm. When the church heads back to the altar and cries out, give us a move of God lest we die, yes. then we're going to see the mighty hand of 
God move the heavens rend and God come down Lord. and manifest right. yourself right. in the midst but, of it. But what brings that then, gentlemen? Repent. Uh, you, you have to come to a state of knowing that you're backslidden. Mm -hmm. That's what the church doesn't know. Knowledge first. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 look inside and say, hey, I don't have peace. I don't have joy. I don't have victory. I don't have anointing. I can't set people free. Uh, I, 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 I can't give my testimony. Many Christians in this country can't even give their own testimony. So see what's wrong inside them first and then ask forgiveness for it. You, you, you know, Daniel's one of the greatest prayers in the Bible. Mm. He repented for the, for the nation and yes. for himself yes. and, and began to cry out to God. And, and, and when he did, God says, I'm going to answer. Amen. All right, all right. I have this final hope because I know as you also yearn to see America moved and shaken like we're seeing other nations moved and shaken. Joel does say that in the latter day he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. All flesh. flesh. Man, that's, that's America too, isn't it? Amen. We, we're going we to have qualify. it, aren't we? Yeah. We're we going qualify. to have it. We do have it. I, I know we have it, places it but, that are, but it's in hot that are, spots. That are receptive for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Receiving it. But yeah. all flesh. Yeah. Isn't the day coming, Brother Summer, when, when, when I don't think even the porno means, man is going to feel the impact? I don't believe all flesh impact? means every flesh. You've got to look at that. Really? All flesh don't mean every flesh. All right. No, all kinds of flesh. But it don't mean every flesh. And God can pour out His Spirit upon you and your friends in this area here, and there'll be people that get nothing of it. It's still all flesh but not every flesh, because some are determined to go into the great tribulation, and they're determined to go to hell. They're, they're, they're full of hate toward God, yeah. and he's still pouring out his spirit. Now, uh, in, in Matthew 24, Jesus told us what's going to happen in the last days. And in and, uh, and, and 1 Timothy 4 and 1, uh, the Holy Ghost, it says the Spirit speaking uh, in the last days, and they shall leave their faith and give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of, death, of devils. But in Acts uh, 2 and 17, uh, it says, in the last day saith God. Mm. So you got the Son, you got the Holy Ghost, and you got the Father. The Son said earthquakes. The Father said, I pour my spirit upon all flesh. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're going to have all of them working simultaneously, and we're going to have to decide which side of the street to live on. Mm. That's it. And that's mm -hmm. the church, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's okay. It. That's the church, too. And are we not now beginning to see some of those diverse Movings of God. Yeah. things that, that Jesus pointed yeah. out in Matthew Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, we're seeing all of them. Yeah. On the face of the earth. Yeah. I, I do see this. I do see this. On the one hand, Holy Spirit being outpoured. Yeah. Okay. But on the other hand, the judgment. Paul says, as it was, or Jesus uh, even Jesus. said, as it Jesus was in the said, days of Noah, so shall it be yeah. at the coming of the Son of Man. As it was in the days of Lot, yes. so shall it be at the yeah. coming of the Son of Man. Yeah. So, you know, when in world history have we seen these, th these unusual, uh, Paradoxes, yeah. uh, Holy Spirit outpouring, yeah. and yet yeah. gays marching in the street, yeah. coming out of right. the closet. You know, yeah. when in history it's have we seen? Before. It's never has it. That means these are the last days. Yeah. The key to Matthew 24 is not that there are famines and earthquakes and pestilence and all those things. The key to Matthew 24 is Jesus said, when you see all these things come to pass in one generation beginning when Israel became a nation. With this generation, now we see the culmination of all things. Now, now we see the great line of separation. And it is time that the church of Jesus Christ is coming out of the blurs of indistinction, where our good friend John Osteen said the world has been so churchy and the church so worldly. It was hard to tell the difference. The line of separation is being drawn. The cold are becoming colder. And the hot, thank God, are becoming hotter. Yeah, yeah. Amen. But again, never, never. in history till now never. have we seen never. these never. conditions existing side by never. side, have we? Never. 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 Boy, that means one thing. Glory. Jesus is coming hallelujah. soon. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. He's coming. All in favor. Hallelujah. <laughs> He's coming. Oh, even so, come yeah. Lord Jesus, as the great apostle John said. And yet, our hearts burn to see that next country open or, or you know talk yeah. about mixed emotions i mean yeah. on the one hand you want him to come tonight yes. on the other hand i want to get that station built yes. in russia yeah. i want to see uh, millions come yes. in, in africa zaire was in yeah. my office uh, the, the the head of the whole fcc 
of Zaire pleading with me, send me French pro Brother Summer, don't you forget, I gotta have those French programs of yours. Well, They'll put it on for you. If America gets as hungry as Russia, correct? Mm -hmm. If America gets as hungry as Russia, yeah. you may have the FAA President of the United States of America coming in and mm -hmm. begging you for this kind of a gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a problem why they're not running to the altars anymore. Yeah. It's this ungodly affluence that we've got. Yeah. Everybody's got the best doctors, the best lawyers, the best food, the best steaks, the best houses, the best barns. Yeah. America returned to God during the Gulf War, Newsweek magazine, yeah. on their front page said America goes back to church. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. we better wake up. Revival or wrath, Leonard Ravenhill said. And as for my vote, I vote for revival. Amen. Let's have revival. Amen, amen, amen. Maybe just a minute here and, and I'll... Dan, where did you go? You left me. Bring all the <laughs> prayer requests up here. We want to have a final season of prayer with Brother Summerall and, and Brother Parsley joining us and agreeing with us for your needs. Hurry, get your, your, your prayer requests in. We'll have one more time of prayer together. Okay. I think we're all pretty much in the same um, vein of understanding as far as where we are in God's timeline. I, I firmly believe we are the generation yeah. that, that's going to welcome Jesus yeah, I back. Yeah. I really do. Now, there, there'll be some of us that'll, you know, obviously yeah. go on before, before Jesus comes. But I really believe, generally speaking, this generation that's alive on earth now yeah. Is, is not going to pass away mm. un, until all things are fulfilled. Yeah. But now there, there are other voices yeah. in the land today. And Brother Summerall, I'll ask you first. And, and, and they're coming from some good men, mm. some wonderful godly men. Mm. And, and I'm hearing some, some other things that, that, well, yeah, Jesus is coming, but, um, you know, not until uh, the, 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 the body of Christ kind of takes dominion over everything on earth Where did they get that first in the well i don't know i'm asking you <laughs> well it's not in the bible oh it's not no I see. The, in the days of noah it's in the bible and we got it yes in the days of lot and we've got it i'll give you a great truth we ought to charge them for it <laughs> <laughs> preach yeah. tell they, us they, they can this is tremendous there could never be a world empire of evil until god was abandoned in jerusalem right. god had no voice mm -hmm. god had no temple and the devil rose up. He had wanted to create Babylonia, the seat of, a, of occultism, uh, under David. But David sung so loud he couldn't make it. Yeah. Solomon praised God in wisdom until he couldn't make it. Yeah. But when the people of Israel abandoned God, then Babylon was born. And, and, and that's where the occult system is, was born and came. And then the Persian Empire. God had no voice in the earth. His temple was gone. You, you see, yes. and, and so lasciviousness and, and adultery filled the earth through the, through, the, through, the, through the immoralities of the Persian Empire. And, and, and then, as God still had no voice, the Grecian Empire teaching him uh, humanism uh, to, to the world. It's still, every university is full of Grecian uh, oh, uh, uh, philosophy today, yes. which is a lie. It's been a lie all the time. Mm -hmm. and, 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 then, and then the Roman Empire, God still had no voice and then the Roman Empire uh, rose up. That's the four world empires. Now that teaches you just one great thing. The Antichrist yes. cannot come until we go. That's right. You hey, say, why? Hey. Our prayers stop him. Yes. Yeah. 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 Millions of people are saying, God, stop him. Stop him. Every time we cast out a devil, we're stopping Antichrist. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You see? Yeah. So until the, the, the light of the world, which is the church, is gone, then the total darkness comes. And when the salt of the earth is totally gone, uh, then the rottenness of humanity right. is in its, in its fullest state. Mm -hmm. And so uh, un until the, the body of Christ is going to be with God, you cannot have an antichrist ruling supreme. No. You say, why? Millions of people understand who antichrist is and they hate him and they come against him. And so he has no power to, to reach and take the power because God's people resist him. Well, of course, I understand that and I agree with it, by the way. But, I mean, there are some who would say there, there won't really be a personal antichrist. This is an antichrist spirit that's in the world today and well, we're going to finally, the Bible, then. we're going to finally, you yeah. know, overcome that and God's people are going to take more and more dominion, yeah, dominion, dominion, and, and we're going to get this world finally cleaned up and, that is and a lie. Jesus will come back. That is a lie. 
I the world's see. going to get worse and worse and worse un until Jesus comes and cleans out the whole mess. Amen. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And we're going to be the ones. We'll be glad to do it. We can no more. We can no more. <laughs> <laughs> we can no more clean up this earth to make it ready to receive our Lord. No. Then we could clean up ourselves to make us yeah. ready to That's receive right. our That's Lord. Right. That's right. He's That's going right. to come. Yeah. He's going to come in like manner yeah. as he went. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, yeah. he was here and he was gone. Yeah. And he's coming back yeah. in that same manner. Yeah. And he's coming for me because I'm determined to go. Amen. Rod, we've got an extra few minutes here. Oh, okay. I know that there's a group out there that have heard Brother Summerall's testimony tonight. Mm. They've heard you. They've heard these songs. They felt the Spirit of God. Yes. Would you take a minute? Let's invite them to know yes. Jesus right Amen. now. Jesus. Yes. The first thing that you need to realize is that you're a sinner. Mm. If you don't realize you're a sinner, you don't need a Savior. But if you'll just examine the inside of your heart right now, you'll find an empty chasm a loneliness, a hurt, and a coldness on the depths of your inner being. And I'm talking to people tonight that not only are out in the bars, I'm talking to people that sit in church buildings week after week after week. And you've made a decision, but you've never been converted. You made a good decision to try to be a good moral person, but you've never been converted. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. old things are passed away and all things are become new mm -hmm. unto him. Jesus Christ of Nazareth shed his precious blood on an old rugged cross outside of Jerusalem on a hill called Calvary. And one drop of his precious blood can save you. Amen. And God will save from the uttermost to the guttermost one drop of his precious blood. If you want to be free right now, why don't you join me in this prayer? Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I come to you just like I am. I come to you just like I am. I was born a sinner. I was born a sinner. And I've committed sins. And I've committed sins. I ask you now to forgive me. I ask you now to forgive me. Wash me in your precious blood. Wash me in your precious blood. Give me eternal life. Give me eternal life. Give me eternal life. Satan, Satan. Satan. I renounce you. I renounce you. You are not my God. You are not my God. And I will not serve you. I will not serve you. Go from me now. Go from me now. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Fill my heart. Fill my heart. And let me know. And let me know. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm on my way to heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I believe it. Amen. And I believe it. Amen. I believe it. <laughs> Hallelujah! And I believe he believes it. Um, <laughs> and many of you believe it now. And I urge you to do that next thing that the Word of God commands you to do. Confess yes, with, your, with mouth. your mouth. That means tell somebody out loud. And if nobody's there to tell it out loud, I've, I've advised people to lift the window up and tell the neighbor next door or call somebody on the phone or go out and flag a car down on the street and tell yeah. them maybe God wants to save them tonight. Amen. Let somebody know yes. by telling them with your mouth out loud that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. That could be the means of winning another person to Jesus Christ. I've heard many testimonies of that, of that kind. But at least get to the phone now. And uh, honey, get... Lori, sweetheart, take a telephone. Everybody, take a telephone. There's going to be a wave of prayer Bless and praise you. reports and salvation reports coming Bless in. Them. Get everybody on the phone that we can in California and here and all the prayer partner centers because I know many are going to confess. I have a new helper here tonight. Hello, young man. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have a final prayer together. And Jan, honey, gather them all up for us as we get ready to say goodnight in prayer. But, oh, I urge you to make that public confession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ by calling and letting us know right now that Jesus has come into your heart. Many, many deliverances, Brother Thank Summerall. You, Lord, as you prayed earlier this evening, Jesus, many people set Jesus. free, many coming to the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior tonight. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, how much time have we got here? About, about 13 minutes. I'll tell you what let's do. Let's have Vern sing this song. 
I, I sense that there's a whole wave of, of, of praise reports, salvation reports that want to come in on the phones and we'll give you uh, three or four minutes to do that right now as Vern sings and then we'll have our final season of prayer together just as we say good night. Vern Jackson's going to bless you with a wonderful old favorite in the garden medley. Make your call as he does. I come to the garden the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God The sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my
Beautiful. Thank you, Vern. Just so many, many beautiful victory reports coming in. Brother Summerall, just so many are being set free to victory over evil spirits mm. tonight. Both felt demons leave. Mm. Didn't, didn't have any struggle at all. They just left. Yeah, they yeah. feel great <laughs> joy. Yeah, they, they, they do that. Debbie and Scott in Chester, Virginia. Yeah. Set free from cigarettes tonight. Praise the, God. the desire mm. is gone. Mm. Uh, praise God for Brother Summerall. Please have more teaching like this. Uh, spirit of jealousy and anger left mm. tonight. Glory. Yeah, that's great. Uh, son, mental illness, they thought, but mm. believe now it was demon power, and mm. the son is, is touched tonight. Mm. Um, someone asked a question. Should you only speak in tongues in private? You should speak in tongues all the time and, and uh, speak in tongues in, 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 uh, in church. You should speak in tongues uh, in your worship. When I drive an automobile, if I'm in a car by myself, I speak in tongues all over wherever I'm going, <laughs> just very loud. People pass at me, look and see who I'm talking to. Yeah, you know, and, and, and so uh, Paul did it to build himself up, you know, and, and, and so if you do it, it'll build up something spiritual inside of you. And, and it's, don't be quiet when it comes. That's your hotline to heaven. Mm. Uh, that, that, that is your, 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 your touch between the heavenly Father and yourself, and you should activate it very strong. And in doing so, you receive strength, you receive power, and many times you receive pertinent information on how you should live and how you should act and what you should do. And, and therefore, it should be in church and it should be during the daytime. Uh, and it, 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 wherever you are, uh, just speak in tongues. And, and uh, God will bless you for it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good. Healed from severe stomach pains Praise tonight God. as we prayed. Anorexia, alcoholism, delivered tonight. Mm. Want a Bible? You shall have one. Um, Claudette. Diagnosed cancer, given two months to live, out of the hospital, and well, to, after Praise prayer, God. after phoning in on the prayer line. Praise the Lord. God's doing some great things tonight. And I just want to say thanks again to Brother Lester Summerall. Bless you. God love you. Thank you. Rod Parsley. Thank you, Paul. Let's Lord, tell both of these great servants of God that we're glad they were here tonight. You've blessed us. You've taught us. You've helped us. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Brother Summerall, lead us in a... Final prayers. We believe God we for more miracles. Thank you, Lord, that we have a relationship. <laughs> yes. We have a relationship with the one that's our Father, no, 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 who no, art no, in heaven. No, no, no. And how glad we are that you listen to your children. Yes. And now we come to you, Lord, for these that have called in, and we rebuke Satan's power. In yes. the name of We rebuke his diseases. Mm -hmm. we, we rebuke his torments. Yes. Yes. Go! Amen. I command pain to come out of you. And it's gone. I, be, I, I command all kinds of diseases inside the organs of your body to leave, and they're gone. Cancer, die! Yes. I command that blind eye to be open, and that you call in. And tell us how well you can see. Mm. Blindness, go now! Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. Lord, set America free. Oh God. You spirit of unbelief, oh, God. go! Go. In go. The name of Let the Jesus. people have faith in God. Mm. And you spirit of ridicule, you're from hell. Yes. Yes. Go now! Yes. You're rebuked by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, we feel so good. Thank you. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Yes, amen. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. Well, let's all stand and just give God praise and thanks for a wonderful night tonight. Just lift your hands and praise the Lord for a wonderful night in His presence. How many have been blessed and touched in some way tonight? Wave at me up there. Oh, it's a good night. It's Praise a good night. God. Praise God. Thank Praise God for Christian television. They can Amen. send it um, across Jesus. America and um, now even around the world. God by the told me old. that it, the time would come when it would be the only voice he had to the people, that the commercial stations are going to put God off, mm -hmm. the networks are going to put God off, and the only voice God will have is Christian television. Amen. We will be his ultimate and last voice before Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. So love it yes. and support it and, support and keep it safe in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name.